what's up y'all jiggers jiggers up squadron uh we did a live event not exactly a live event we were doing a correspondent at a live event and we conducted four interviews two with barbers a podcast and and dami young shout outs to dami young at the san diego barber festival it was a long day it was a lot of work to get these uh interviews up and running and done it was a very fun event and we got to meet some people and be inspired by so many people so before the show starts i just do want to say that the music in the background we do not own it we were not playing the music in the background so i don't want any motherfucking copyright strike laws to come down on this podcast because we have so many dope content going on here just for our listeners our subscribers our jiggers or the jiggers up squadron the, the jig squad however you guys want to consider yourselves this one is for y'all all right peace sound, sound crash music <laughs> Jiggas Up Podcast, episode 121. One Let's deuce, go. one. Live. I don't know if you guys can hear the noise in the background. We're here oh, hear being hear correspondents <laughs> out here at the San Diego Barber Festival. Uh, coming live from here. Uh, right now, there is a, a student tag team barber competition going on. Yes, sir. It's looking like the damn Royal Rumble at the booth. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean... You know, maybe you guys will see it on the YouTube. We're gonna do a little, a little highlight video. So that's gonna be on the YouTube channel coming soon. So be on the lookout for that. Um, what's that? Kmart uh, signed signed up. He's gonna be a model. He's gonna take one for the team. He's gonna, he gonna add yeah, it to the resume. Yeah, I'll take one for the team. <laughs> He's gonna put model on his Instagram bio. <laughs> He's gonna be taking bookings. Somebody gotta do it. <laughs> one of us have to do it. <laughs> Surprise yeah. ain't you, Marco. Hey, I already got my lineup. I'm good. Uh, I already got my lineup. I'm good. Oh, I, I, I wasn't, you know. <laughs> I'm here podcasting, nigga. I ain't a model. Yeah. Unless they pay me. <laughs> then I model. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Facts. <laughs> bag facts. First. <laughs> I need that bag. <laughs> so, Straight yeah. To the pros. Yeah, they, they, better, they better put my part on before they change the song. What, the half black and Asian part? You know they're going to cut it off. That yeah, song is too long. Let's cut that part no, off it's anyway. in the second verse. Yeah, they're going to make it to the second you know, verse. It ain't going to make it to the second verse. Hell no, they're not making that shit. I'll be, anyway. I'll be glad if it doesn't make hey, it. Are we taking any bets? <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm. Hey, I, you know what? All I got is a five on me. I ain't trying to bet. Nothing. Unless we send them money to Memos. I only got Venmo I only got plastic. Oh, yeah, we Venmo. I know, right? Okay, that's crazy. Fine, I'll bet you a quarter. I thought you could do that. How Venmo. Like, you can't Yo, run from a bet now. Because uh, with, with techn- no, but if you don't send it. But yeah, but yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If you shake on it, with, with modern technology now, with Venmo, PayPal, and, and Cash App, niggas could take bets all day. Yeah, but you can't, some motherfuckers, they still the same thing. Like, if they got the cash, they didn't get If they don't give it to you, they don't give it to you. Well, yeah. But at the same time, but at the same time, all it takes is a small little tweet. Oh, okay, the competition's over. But all it does is take a small Did tweet. You if you see a nigga buying Jordans okay. and you know he owes you at least five dollars, it's like, oh, nigga <laughs> owes me five dollars, but he could go ahead and buy a whole ass that's, Jordans though. That's yeah. the worst thing ever. Man. But anyways, um, how rude of us, um, you know? Like I said, this is the Jig Is Up podcast, a place with nothing to say. And I'm your host, yours Marco, and I'm with It's your guy M Easy. It's your girl Miss Nessa, aka Blaze Your Mommy. It's your boy K Mert, aka Clutch, aka is hot as fuck. AKA the model. AKA the model. <laughs> the model. You can add that to collection names. <laughs> Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> Stupid. You fucking crackhead no, number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crackheads need love too, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man, she she and Millie out here taking pictures and our lovely Jig is Up podcast shirt. Looking oh so lovely out there. And fresh. With the shirt on. Oh, the shirt. I didn't know I didn't know the shirt looked like that on someone else's back. Repping for the squad. We got a lot of, we got a lot of uh, looking like celebrities. We got Ty Dollar Sign. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, well, there's looking like celebrities she spotted out. Who oh, else? who else is here? Oh shit! I see Ninja over there sitting down, <laughs> from Twitch with the blue. Hair. Okay, okay. If you see, we got Ninja. We got Ty Dolla Sign. Uh, who, who else, man? Who else, who else is out here? I think DJ Jazzy Jeff over there on the ones and twos. Oh, oh, DJ Phoenix. DJ Jazzy. What's up, Phoenix? So. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, oh shit! Yo, got you. <laughs> oh, you got Yo Gotti? Let's get it. Yo Gotti in the house. Nigga, I see Stolly way right, in the back. <laughs> see Stolly? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> see Stolly? Yeah, yeah with the beard. Did I get it right? Man, the stars are out Come here. Yeah. They look alike, to be exact. Oh, look at this. This one niggas look like from Insecure and shit, I'm be honest. Nigga, is that Jimmy Butler? Yo, speaking of Jimmy Butler. Good segue. Good how you? Jimmy Butler. What is going on with Jimmy Butler? All he did was say is, well, damn, on Gabby's Instagram. Like, well, he said damn. all he said. All caps with ex- exclamation mark. <laughs> damn. I mean, if anything, that should be a compliment, D-Wade. But D-Wade. Uh, but is, and, and him and Jimmy are like buddies. And yeah, I was say, but if it's right. your boy, they it's They went to the same college. Okay. Yeah, They man, both went to Marquette. There's, a, there's yeah. a fine line, though, man. Yeah. It's like, yo. Like you know, looking at my wife like that. Yeah, see, and see. it's different. I feel I, obviously I'm not a dude, but I feel like when you guys are having like a conversation with each other, like damn, like you know, like okay, you know, if you show you showing off your wife or your girl, you're like okay, I see you. But by saying that, like to her, direct, like you know what I mean, directly on her, shit, on her Instagram. Yeah, I think that's a little, little crossing the line. Yeah, you can keep, crossing the line. You, you, you kind of kind of keep that shit to yourself, man. Yeah. I mean, so I like know. it's just like if it's like, if you posted if you posted Natalie and then he went on. On, or no, no. If Natalie posted a picture and Kenlin went on and po- and responded to that, like that, that's like, kind of well, damn. Okay, that's yeah. kind of like weird. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like, like I'm like, damn, you got a fat ass. Like <laughs> if he says it to you or something, that's, that's different. But to be on that's her shit, like, right? On that's her thing, kinda yeah. Like sketch. I I feel loyal and, to and, loyal you. See how and you're gonna see that shit because I'm on your friend. So <laughs> yeah, nigga, that'll it's be gonna that, pop up. Right it's gonna be like thousand comments, but you're gonna see his right at the bottom. That's your boy. And that's how. That's what happened to D Wade. He saw Jimmy Butler <laughs> like that comment. Right. And he's like, "What the <laughs> fuck?" That, you know that's so funny because of all them thousands and thousands of comments. Oh you yeah. see Jimmy Butler's on there. And it was funny, Mark, uh, Social media, uh, social media enthusiast uh, Marquise Trill. I don't know if you guys know him. He's big in the social media world. Uh, he called him out on that. He was like, "Dude, it's like all these dudes making thirsty comments about your girl, but." Jimmy yeah. Butler stands out, yeah. and, and we know how the NBA gets down. The NBA dudes be smashing reason. each other's wives and all that stuff. Yeah, the only so people haven't smashed hey. each other. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying in the in the, in the world in that time world. You know what I'm saying? They, I mean, everybody has everybody did somebody and everybody shit. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, who who other than Jimmy Butler that D Wade knows commented on his girl's page though? That like that, stood that, out like uh, that. Like, well, it depends on the like. It depends on him because I'm like he might see other shit that well, like Melo, Chris yeah. Paul, LeBron went on there and said, "Well, damn, yeah. greatness." <laughs> Hashtag greatness. <laughs> <laughs> I am a witness. Fire. Right. Witness. <laughs> witness. <laughs> That's it. That's, I mean, that's the only thing I can see why D-Way replied. He's like, you mo- you're supposed to be like one of my yeah. boys. Yeah. So. Okay. Like, and, and then it's one of those things, um, out of sight, out of mind. That shit was insight. Everybody's sight. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like everybody saw their mind. mind. But in the age of the internet, even if that didn't have that algorithm thing where, where you could see a certain person's comment or, or like, I think Shade Room or someone would have copied it, found it. Because that's what they do. You know, they scour the internet for shit like that and they put it out there and then it, yeah. it hashtag it and it's going to get their attention one way or another. Yeah, man. they do the fishing for shit, man. Okay, okay. I mean, I, I think Instagram set up Jimmy Butler, man. That's what Instagram <laughs> set up They're Jimmy like, Butler. Oh, shit, nigga. It's an NBA okay, shit, but one. if you ain't got no so, business doing it, then don't so, put that shit so, public. So, um, how do you guys feel about Dwayne Wade's reaction? <laughs> hey. <laughs> he, he defended his wife. <laughs> <laughs> but but one thing one one thing one thing that kind of that kind of came and bit him in the ass. He had no reply for it. 
Yeah. I always say this black men don't cheat. And if they have this war, <laughs> it's because I don't know what happened to him. He was hypnotized by white supremacy and they told him to cheat on this his black queen. But anyways, he was in the zone at the time. But anyways, yeah, it's, it's a conspiracy. It was a conspiracy. <laughs> Dwayne was set up when he did that to Gabby. Anyway, yeah, he was set up. People, people uh, were hitting him up, talking about, well, nigga, you cheated on your wife like ten times. When you talk, why are you getting all mad about Jimmy? Like, how you gonna get all defensive? So my next question is. Jimmy. I mean, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy the Cricket getting mad at Jimmy Butler. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, damn. But anyway, I was going to say, like, as a person who probably cheated on their mates before or anything like that, for no, no, like, as for people who've done it, for our listeners, right. do you feel that cheaters, even though they reconcile to their loved ones after betrayal, do the cheater have a right to be jealous? Even though they're the ones who cross the line. Wait, sorry. State that over again because... Do cheaters deserve the right to be jealous? Period. And layman's... It's, it's not like a... It's, it's not like a past like, oh, okay, I cheated on you, so you... Well, it depends. Open the floodgate. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need you to elaborate more on that because I, I feel like that's a little bit kind okay, of vague. So the question. Like, I, under, I hear just, it, but I'm trying to understand. Let's, speak, let's just speak on specifically D-Way's situation. Okay. He cheated on his wife a bunch of times. Does he have the right to react the way he did towards Jimmy Butler? Well, yeah, because it's not like he came at her. Yeah. If he came at her, then it would be a different story because she right. didn't do shit. Yeah. You okay. know, but he came at her. So, of course, at the end of the day, that's his girl. That's his boy. And if he's going to be saying stuff to his girl, of course, yeah. you could feel some type of way. As long as it's not her coming at, you know what I mean? Like, if yeah. he came at her. Like she or like she went on Jimmy Butler's page? Yeah. Well, damn. Yeah, then, I, then yeah, okay, it's like, mm, so I want now, that Jimmy, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> in that sense, it kind of seems like also oh, because I did it. Now you're trying to like yeah. you know play the nah like yeah. <laughs> okay, we have our first guest first coming up guest. here at the Da-da-da-da. San Diego Barber Shop Barber Festival. Sorry, uh, it goes by the name of Tim the Barber. Oh, uh, you could have given him a chance to introduce Let's see if you can hear us. What's going on? Oh, what's up? What's up, Tim? You right with us? My name is yours, Marco. Yeah, All right. I'm, I'm an easy. How you doing? What's going on, what's going on brother? I miss Nessa. Hey, how you doing, beautiful? Oh, thank you. All right. Yeah. So, um, so Kay told me that you're the owner of Legends Barbershop. Yes, okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So where's that located? For those who uh, don't know, it's located at uh, 7140 University Avenue, in Mesa, California. Oh, okay. So you like right not not too far right, from right it. down the street from Kay Cup. Wow, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So, like, for the barber community, I know, like, there's a balance, there's a, there's a divine, divine line between uh, competition and camaraderie. So, there's no like, competition. There's no competition? There's no competition. When you enter this barber game, you got to have a, you got to have a focus on just what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You got to have right. tunnel vision. So, with the people that's out here trying to compete with each other, that's not part of the barber game. You know what I'm saying? We okay. all got to work together to make sure that we build our community up. Support especially for one the black, another. Yeah, especially so, for the black communities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's, there's not too many businesses out here, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, so when you think about competition, you kind of isolate yourself from everybody. So, okay. I, don't, I don't think no competition. That's, I, like I compete that. with myself. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Nobody else. Nobody else. All right, so like as far as like black uh, community and, and unity and, and all that good stuff, how do you feel about like other aspects of black entertainment or black businesses having that toxic uh, competition like feel like let's say like a Kevin Hart versus Mike Epps like they're both great comedians, right? They do their thing, but at the same time, people still take shots at each other. Or like in the hip hop world, like you know Nicki taking shots at Cardi. Like how do you like what would you tell them as entertainers from a bar but like yo like cut that shit out it's, it's money for everybody it's all entertainment man yeah just like uh your boy what's his name six nine uh-huh. yeah, yeah he does it for the clout you know yeah. what i'm saying so we call it we call it clout currency yeah, yeah. I yeah. Like, <laughs> hey. trying to make some money yeah. off of it yeah i wouldn't be surprised if them do you know kick it with each other right you know, let's start a beef man you know it just gives you more clout. you know it's all about the clout nowadays mm. so in the barber game i mean 
I don't see what the point of that doing that is, you know. Oh, okay. There's too many clients out there to be fighting over okay. who, who's the best barbershop or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Let, the, let, the, let the clients do the battle. Right. And you guys just collect right. the checks. Right, right, right. right, right. There's collect too the, many people that need their haircuts. And, I mean, I'm not a man myself, but I know for the most part men like to get their hair cut, like, at least once or twice a week, depending on their funds. So <laughs> there's plenty. I'm sure there's plenty to go around. So, like, what are, what are your what are your pros and cons of being a barber? Like, owning the whole shop instead of just owning the booth? Uh, pros and cons. So, one of the hardest parts about owning a barber shop is uh, making sure your barbers work as hard as you do. Nice. Right. Sometimes mm -hmm. barbers don't, you know, they don't treat their barbershop like it's there sometimes, right? you know. So, for you being the owner, you got to be hard on them sometimes. And sometimes they can get in their feelings. Sometimes they might not like that. Right. Like I was talking to Kay about that earlier, you know. Uh, some, some barbers get in their feelings. So, I think that's like the biggest challenge for me. Like, trying to make sure every barber feels comfort, you know, where they work at, you know. So, uh, I mean, the benefits to it, of course, like, you're going to make a lot of money. So, right, right. <laughs> I mean, I would say that. You good over here? You waiting for your Okay, job? make a lot of money. Yeah. So, like, like what, what, what got you into being a barber? Like, did you like the art of it, the business of it? So, uh, the independent spirit? For me, I grew up in a foster home, man. So, I didn't really have like the money and to you know go to a barbershop to get a haircut so i kind of just started doing my own thing cutting my own hair you know yeah and from there it just kind of just grew into something that i would just do every day so when people ask me how long i've been cutting dude i've been cutting since i was like 12 years old okay so that's where i started at yeah so like did you like cut up the homies too like, yeah definitely definitely yeah before they go out to the party and everybody function. at school man i started in the eighth grade man i got my that's first pair of clippers yeah i got my first pair of clippers when i was in eighth grade well, what kind of uh, clippers some Conairs, man, from Walmart. That's every that's every barber starter kit, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they have no Conairs. You're not a true barber, man. So. Nah, I was about to say you didn't get the wall, the wall joints. Nah, from man, I, I couldn't afford it, man. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's up? What's, uh, what clip do you use now? Uh, right now I use uh, the wireless Andis. Yeah. I mean the the wall wireless. My bad. I'm sorry. Okay. And I use a uh, Andis. Uh, what are they called? The wireless, the liners. I don't know the names to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. I only use two clippers though. Okay. That's all you really yeah, need. Yeah, like sometimes I see some barbers that have like a whole little arsenal yeah, right yeah, yeah, hanging yeah. up. Yeah, I only use two clippers. Okay. Yeah. Ten. That's a sign. That's dope. Eight, <laughs> how, how, long, how long have you uh, ha had the uh, shop? Five, uh, four, actually, it'll be three, a year next two, next week. Actually. Hey. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah, we've been doing pretty good. Yeah. We got about seven barbers now, so we're doing good. Seven barbers? Yeah, yeah seven. Whole rotation. Yeah. Oh, got yeah. a seven man rotation for the team. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, That's sir. enough to get you deep in the playoffs. That's a whole I'm trying to go to the championship. <laughs> That's enough to get you, you know, probably like a conference finals. And, you know? Where's the Titus? And what was the name of your shop again? Uh, Legends Barbershop. Legends Barbershop. Legends Barbershop. Not to be confused from the, the Legends Barbershop out in L.A., right? There's a lot of Legends Barbershop. Oh, Mine yeah. is with a Z. Everybody, Everybody got the S. I got the Z. You got the Z. Right. Okay. <laughs> you got to right. emphasize that. Make it stand that. out differently. That's right. Yeah, Those man. That's facts. So, man, uh, man, anything else you want to promote? Anything you want to get out? Man, uh, nah, man, just shout out to K-Cuts, man, for throwing this dope little battle right here, man. It's, it's, it's good to see everybody out here showing love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, everybody coming out there on some positive energy and doing their thing. Okay. That's what's up. And, and, and also, as a, as a foster child, you know, uh, how did you end up like growing up to? How do you find your? How did you find your way from being a foster home? Because I know it's hard to define stability. Yeah. And how did you manage to find that stability to where you are now? From being from foster homes to being a a, a store owner. Man, the story of my life. Uh, we got we got time today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was hard, man. I went through so many obstacles in my life, like. Going from foster home to foster home, you know, and uh, you know I made my mistakes, you know, as, as a young man. Um, I ended up having my son when I was like 19, so that kind of forced me, you know what I'm saying? Once, once I had him, it's kind of like a reality check. And then, uh, thank God, like I had a couple programs that I still kept in contact with, and they paid for me to go to school and for my living and then for everything, man. That kind of got me through it. Oh wow! And then from there, I just stayed consistent with it. And then, it's, next thing you know, I'm going to one barbershop to another barbershop. The next thing you know, I got my own shop. So. That is it didn't take too long. Yeah. 
didn't yeah. take long at all. Yeah, yeah so. How, like how long would you say? Like, uh, like a couple of years? Or? It took me about three years. Three, okay. Four years, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, not, that's not yeah. bad at all. That's, yeah. that's kind of starting from nothing, though. You know, I didn't yeah. have yeah. no good support system or anything. The only support system I had was a little foster program. You know, yeah. they helped me out a lot. I'm pretty sure you had to get your credit right, too, if you want to own oh, that man, building. Man, my credit's still bad, man. <laughs> 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 Got to put it in my mama's name. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Hey, just, just don't mess up your mama's credit. Oh, my mama messed my credit up. Man. Oh. Oh. Hey, no, no, it oh. really be like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It really, it really be like that. It really oh be man, like it's that. tough. It's yeah, tough. Man. I ain't gonna lie, man. I've, I've, I've worked. I'm working hard to get my stuff. I'm trying to get it to that 800 club. Oh man. I'm trying to get to that 800 club. That's my right. pops got me, man. Oh yeah. Mine, All of them. Mine too. 80, mine 80, too. The 80s babies got, got yes. kind of messed up, man. <laughs> yeah, pops All right. got me too. But yeah, uh, man. I would say to. I mean, all the kids out there that really don't have nothing, you know, this barber game is a real, it's a real good career, you know. You uh-huh. can't take it for granted, but it's something that you can do. No, no, like everybody needs a haircut. I don't right. Interview, parties, networking events, like. Just life, dude. Like, right. you want to feel good. You know, when you walk out that chair, you like, yeah, all right, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and that's the best feeling in the world for me, too, man. Like, people get on my chair, you know, and you're like, dude, like. It's the best haircut I ever had, man. That's the best feeling in the world for me. So, yeah. So, so what have you? Uh, I have a question. Um, what would you say is your, your best uh, attribute as far as being a barber? Like, is it the, the haircut itself, or like all the way around? Man. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't limit myself to anything. I make sure. I try to, you know, try to try everything that out there in the barber game, you know, because everything is so much going on. Like in the barber game right now, people yeah. doing portraits, people doing all kind of things, you know. Yeah. So you yeah. don't want to limit yourself to anything. Yeah. Yeah. The, le- the more you limit yourself, the less money you make. You know, yeah. so exactly. I don't want to be that barber. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jack of all trades. I feel it. <laughs> so have you ever seen that video of this one white guy talked about his first black barber experience? The best barber experience he yeah, ever had. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you probably looked at you probably. Kind I mean, it's like, man, that's standard. That's what yeah. we do. <laughs> hey, matter of fact, I get that a lot, man. Out here. Oh, really? Yeah, man. I get a white dude to sit in my chair, start sweating. <laughs> you know, turn around and be like, hey, you know how to cut white hair? You, uh, you know what? We're going to find out, bro. You know? <laughs> we all learn a day. Yeah. <laughs> you going to catch these hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the other way around. Usually the barbers be the ones sweating, but. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so. Yeah, it works out for me, man. Uh, that's good. Definitely. That's good. So, what would you say is like, like the trendiest haircut that everybody's doing, or you see like around all the let time? Me, let me turn around real quick. Okay. <laughs> the the the. I would say the comb over, man. The comb over. Everybody got a comb oh. over, man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. With the color on the top, you know what I'm saying? The, okay. So. Yeah, we live, y'all. Here's a lot of back no- noise in the background. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> This one's pretty live right here. All right, man. So I don't want to hold you up, man. Any oh, more? Yeah. Any last questions for Tim the Barber? Tim the Baba. The Baba. The Baba. B A B A. Oh, Baba. Okay. Excuse me. I'm all proper. He's like, get it right. Tim the Barber. Tim the Baba. The Baba. The Baba. Nah, but you know, keep keep the positive energy and keep doing what you do. Thank you. We support it. Y'all gotta support him. Yeah, I'm gonna come through for sure. Oh, for sure, man. Legend Barber with a Z. With a Z. With a Z. Y'all can also follow my Instagram too. Yeah, go ahead. Tim the Baba 23. Tim the so Baba guys, 23. Yeah, you guys can get a look at the stuff that I do, you know. Okay. okay. All right, we'll go The most ahead. humblest way. Trying to say that the, in the most humblest way. Yeah, talk yeah, your man. shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, and we'll have that on the show notes, too. So, like, we'll, we'll uh, hit you up. We'll let you know that the episode's out. And okay. you go ahead and listen to it. So, yeah. Yeah, man. I appreciate y'all, man. All of y'all. All right, no problem, man. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for stopping through. Are you from San Diego? What school you representing? All right. The program. Yo, give it up, give it up, give it up one time. I got right. I was like, I was like, he did. <laughs> I get a hug. Tim the Baba. I get a hug. <laughs> Legend, Bar- Legend Barber Shop. That's what's up. So that was our first hey, interview. Yay. Okay. Oh, hold on. I'll be right back. Let me just uh, have, have I got to get some name? information. All right. One more time. Why are you At some? first, I was like, dang, his, he gave all you guys handshakes. And yeah. then I see him. I was like, okay, just leave me hanging. Okay. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> That's what's up. That's a big old dog, yo. What dog? That one right there, look. 
right there. Oh, the okay. Oh, shit. I mean, that ain't no damn dog. That's a damn horse. <laughs> that ain't no damn puppy, Gina. Yeah, ain't no damn puppy. You got the time so you can see? Yeah, puppy my ass. Pressure, huh? <laughs> I thought you were on Instagram this whole time. I was going to oh, All right. <laughs> yeah. What's the what's the word? Words on the streets. <laughs> Word on the streets. I think we're going to probably just chill, take a little break, and we'll be back at it. After these messages. After these messages. Subscribe. 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 Business. I started my own business and brand. Uh, and it's right. called That's it's called up. six uh, are, are we are we are we live? Oh okay, sorry, uh, okay. sorry. It's all good. Wait, introduce right. your guys and yeah, let, oh, okay, so hey, we, we here. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's your boy Mac two three zero one straight out of six side. It's your boy Real Walter Ford. <laughs> from Gary, Indiana, don't go. Oh, no. how do you know that? Yo, I have family. I have family in Gary. <laughs> Wait, for real? <laughs> yes. Straight up. Joe Jackson beat down city, nigga. Yes. That's, cra- that's so crazy, bro. Yeah, we probably cousins. Don't even know it. Just, right. his, his family got the eyes. My family got the nose. That's probably related. <laughs> but it's real Walter Ford. My bad. All the social media. But. Okay. And <laughs> hey, you guys, uh, what, what podcast you guys are repping? I, I see... You guys told me you guys from the podcast. Introduce your podcast. Yeah, yeah. We uh we are co-host of the Activated Podcast. Okay. We have one more um, co-host too. His name is GDQ to one. Um, here I'll let you explain a little bit. All right, all right. Um, yeah, it's called the Activated Podcast. You can find it on YouTube, SoundCloud, and uh, iTunes. You know, we had 20, 21 episodes. And we pretty much uh, talk about everything, you know. If it's a topic and we can have a voice and opinion about it, we talk about it. And it's real authentic, uncut, you know. We just keep it all the way real. You know, if you mess up on a word, we mess up on a word, we keep that shit going. You know, like and that. and then come back next week and say it right. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like we're yeah, it's just she. <laughs> you know, if I'm if I if I sit there and mess up somebody's name, hey, my bad. You know, but <laughs> I'm gonna get it right. You right, know, right. so um, yeah, man. Like I said we we just talk about everything. You know, from motivation to politics to music to sports to okay. uh, social social topics. You know. Racism, you know, police brutality. Okay, like, so racism th- and police brutality. Let's talk about it. Shit. Yeah. All right. I say well, <laughs> one thing. I say really, if you look He's at it ready. now, we He's all ready. got one thing in common. We all minorities. Right. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Especially and in this city. Yeah. It and it's so crazy <laughs> because like people don't really realize that here we are close to Mexico, and Mexicans are not even the the dominant. Right. You know, race. Right. Yeah. You know, by population they are, by population, but, but not like by, term. but not by clout or yeah. power or structure. And but you would think, but even then you would think they'd be the top two, and they're not even two. Asians outnumber them in terms of like power out here. Yeah. You know, and that just shows you that like even when we're closest to people in terms of skin color. We're still not together. We're still not, you know, in control of things. Like, we just we just talked to Tim uh, earlier of Legends Barbecue, the owner. Not barbecue, barbershop. No, I'm not thinking about barbecue. barbecue. You're hungry. That's what it is. <laughs> right. yeah. You're hungry. No, I just ate. But uh, <laughs> barbershop, barbecue. I don't know. Oh, Maybe yeah. barbecue is close. Hello? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, he was talking about just, like, everybody being together, you know, despite that, you know, barbers have their own shops they are still together and they still reunite and work out and he said he he explained that especially in the black community that we need to do that and uh, yeah I mean like the group social uh, economics is a big thing in San Diego mm-hmm. because you think about it when you have the money you have the infrastructure and the influence to to influence on politics mm-hmm. and I think black folks really got to start acting like Hasidic Jews when it comes to policies and, and, and politics Mm-hmm. You know, if a person's talking, if a person comes up to me talking about campaigning or something, I'm like, okay, so what are you gonna do for black people? 
Exactly. Exactly. I don't, I don't exactly. give a fuck. Like, what are you going to do for us? Exactly. <laughs> first, that's the first question right yeah. there. I a thousand percent agree. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What you got for us, bro? Right. Like, what you want what, my vote. Exactly. What are you going to do to earn my vote? And let me see if you yeah. want to keep that same energy if I get you in office. Exactly. Because as a politician, you are supposed to serve the people, your constituents who got you in that motherfucker. Exactly. And people forget so quick. And they just want to represent Tim and Sean and <laughs> right. and Thomas and Pookie and them need to be represented too. <laughs> Pookie. Yeah. And Shaquan and all them. Oh, Pookie, man. Yeah, I just watched Pookie them. I just I just watched New Jack City on HBO too. <laughs> I just and I was like, damn, Pookie, that was his downfall. If he would have laid if he would have laid off that glass dick, he would have infiltrated the Carter. Bro, bro, it's so funny. We were just uh, on one of our previous episodes. We was just shot talking about Pookie and them, and our co-host Q was like, "Yo, who is Pookie and them?" Right. And we were like, right, right. "Look, you don't really know who them is by name. You just know them because they be with Pookie. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, some shit happened, man. And you know that was Pookie and them. Like, and you never, you never want to be in them." Yeah. You never want to be them. <laughs> I'd rather be Pookie than them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd rather be Pookie <laughs> than them. You know, you don't want to be a follower, eh? You know, them are the followers. Nigga, you be the lead crackhead, not the following crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck's wrong with you? Where's your goals yeah. at, nigga? Yeah, yeah. Uh, look at you dropping your phone, man. Hey, this, hey, this cat right here, boy. Okay. Uh, 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 this cat right here. <laughs> Lost his phone. I, I helped him get him a new phone. Uh huh. Right? Because he broke this one. So I helped him get a new phone. Motherfucker loses it in two weeks. I'm like, bruh. But we found it. Did, did you <laughs> did, did you hit him with the kid and play line? Like, man, you would lose your dick if it wasn't screwed on to you. me with that all the time. That just means to me that all the people I need to talk to are in front of me at all times. Right, 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 right. Me and this technology just don't go together. Right. That's all that means. Uh, so I need, need an email. Be, need to be off the grid? Yeah, exactly. I need to be off the grid. Email or courier bird. Just send me. Right, right. Just little, drop little, the bird <laughs> at the crib. For real. For real. So, I, I want to... Sorry, no, no, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say I appreciate y'all letting us on the show. Oh, oh, no, 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 I, yeah, I know they loud in the background, but... I do want to say this is this is the first time I've actually been interviewed on a podcast instead of doing the interviews. Right, like right. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, that's a that's a real blessing. And like, like I was watching y'all, like you know, as y'all was interviewing, and I was like, man, regardless, before I leave, I'm gonna make sure I say what's up to y'all because like, like my whole thing is like urban support is what's important. You know, like I we again we were talking about it today, like why we feel like. We as people don't support one another mm -hmm. for whatever reason, yeah. like, and there needs to be more of that. Like, if you got a podcast, nice. hey, I'm gonna go say what's nice. up to you. You yeah. know, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see what you're about. I'm gonna follow y'all. If y'all post something, I'm gonna try to reshare it or whatever the case might be. Yeah. Name drop y'all on my podcast. Hey, I was on the Jig Is Up podcast. Yeah. Man, go check them out. Well, you know, I'm all. We all we all can eat. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. enough out here for yeah. everybody. You know, it ain't. And, and there's really, no reason for us to be. And greedy. not many people know that the podcast yeah. landscape for Black people Two, is very, very, three. very small. Mm -hmm. Like it's dominated hey, by a lot of colonizers or Caucasians or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but no, no, honestly, you know, like I I listen to Joe Rogan. I listen to Joe Rogan Experience. Mm -hmm. I listen to sometimes I listen to Mark oh, Maron. I listen to Chris Hardwick. Oh, like I listen to some white folks, you know, here and there, just to just to see how they are. And the dope thing I find about Joe Rogan, he could talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of gift to gather that I want to have when I podcast. And like I was telling my videographer here, like I'm trying to have all kinds of black people here. I don't give a fuck if they're LGBT or they motherfucking Shea Butter or they fucking Hoteps or they motherfucking any 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 other type of black people. I want them all have on my show. So we all can have a talk. And, and, and talk things through. I, I like. I want to invite some old school gang bangers. You know, like reform <laughs> gangster niggas in, on my show. Oh, the OG, OG, OG. Yeah, triple OG yeah, type yeah. niggas. You know what I mean? Like, I want to have. Yeah. I want to talk to anybody. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Back. Yeah, I was just yeah. gonna say. <laughs> Nigga, I, I, have you listened to the audio, audible, uh, the audible version of Pimp? 
Have it. Iceberg I Slim? Yeah, I have it. It's the coldest shit I ever heard in my life. I, I, I do got the preview. I got it on my wish list, though. <laughs> Nigga, it, right, right. it is the coldest shit I ever heard in my life. I, and, and the lingo cracks me up. He be like, yeah, I told this bitch to get me some scratch. And then she didn't give me that some scratch. And I told her I'll backhand that bitch. And that, and that. It's, called, it's called Pimp by Iceberg Slim. But I listen to the, you can get like a preview before you buy it. So the one minute preview is funnier than the whole thing. Because yeah, it, it it's be a one minute preview of you just saying, uh, him just saying, I seen that bitch on that cone. <laughs> 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 and I slapped that bitch. And I was like, damn, this is Yo. so demeaning. <laughs> and inspirational. So, like, inspirational. so his childhood, Iceberg Slim's childhood, was so fucking cold. Like how the mom used some like used the guy to get to where she needed to be, but she kept fucking with an ink shit nigga. And like I don't want to spoil it. I don't know, yeah. I don't want to spoil it. But that, that shit. That. Yeah, don't ruin it for and, me. And, and, this, and, and mind you, this is in the early 1900s. This is like 1930 some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is like, like this shit. This is like way, this 20th century pimping. Yeah, yeah, this is the first pimping. Yeah, he was the original pimping. <laughs> right. Pimping since been pimping since been pimping. Right. You know, like, like this, this is when they're talking about like just the latter stages of, of slavery being abolished oh and, and, and sharecroppers and all that shit, you know? This pimping like, is fossilized. It, 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 and exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> artifacts. Man. Artifacts. <laughs> I'm going to have to check it out just because it's called pimp. Yeah, right. Iceberg Slim. It's a good liter. It's a good liter. Literary, literary, uh, literary, whatever. Literary. literary uh, piece. I know what you meant. Yeah, yeah. Right. We got it, we got it. I know what you meant. So, yeah. so how, um, so what made you guys get into podcasting? Um, I well, me personally, like, I've never done anything like like this in types of the whole media thing. Like, I've always been like a a people person and like interact. That's just my character, like. Like I'm one of the very few people who love working retail. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, and, you know what I'm saying. Like I'm, I'm for real, bro. That's tough. I, I'm, I'm for real, bro. I, I'll say I've worked AT and T, Best Buy, Foot Locker, Pac Sun. Okay, you know what I'm saying, like yeah. Walmart and shit like that. And you know, I've all, I just love interacting with people. I look because you can learn something from everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, like, but. And the thing is, with me, it's just like, that shit ain't nothing. I, I've took it as like, it ain't nothing personal. Like, the motherfuckers who come in there, they shitty for whatever reason. It ain't got shit to do with you. It's just, they upset. Yeah. You do. You would do the same thing if you order, if you order something, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we got, hey, this dude tall as a motherfucker, boy. Oh, oh what's up? <laughs> he, does he hoop? Does he hoop? My man hoop. <laughs> he light-skinned and he tall, man. He got a hoop. <laughs> <laughs> you got a hoop. What's good, my kid? Nigga wearing a vibranium shirt like it's actually a part of the periodic table. Yeah, vibranium. Like, I was like, this shit ain't a part of the uh, periodic table, nigga. <laughs> it is now. It, it is, is now. now. And he got a shoe game. He got man. a mean air mask game. He got so, a hoop, bro. So, yeah, man, like, like peep, peep the man shirt right here. Broke five, bro. Yeah, we yeah, ain't got, got it. it. Yeah, we ain't got it. Yeah, we ain't got it. Hey, that's that's old. That's old Kanye shit. This Kanye I miss the West. old Kanye. Yeah. You miss right old, the Kanye? old Kanye. Yeah, he said, yeah bro. Yeah. I, I missed the I missed the late registration. Yes. I missed the the college dropout, man. Yes. Honestly, yes. like after graduate, no, after my dark twisted fantasy, yes. like you know that's that that's yeah. pretty yep. much where like that's what I, the, I, 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 He's at the point. I say he don't fuck with him after ye after the dark slave comment. After, oh no, oh, I was about to say after the slave comment, you ain't fuck with him. Get graduation was the Kanye. I was oh, like, oh yeah, and then after the graduation. <laughs> okay. Then, dark I, dark I, I, I can see that. Hey, that's that's my shit. Twisted. But I didn't. I didn't like the sad Kanye, bro. I didn't yeah, like the sad yeah, Kanye. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, well, I understand he was. You know, that's how you emotion and yeah. you gotta get it out and do uh-huh. your music and. And it's Jesus, bro. Come on, bro. Come on now. <laughs> I, I, no, I feel you. Ain't no song. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so, so, you, so, like, so turn that up in the whip. Turn that up. Turn that up. Turn right, right, right. <laughs> so, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me, let me just skip. Let me get our quick uh, Midwest connection going on right here. Yeah. My man Kmart. 
his family is from Chicago, right? Okay, you got family from, from Chicago. City? Okay. They good at ducking. My okay. man over here, his family's from uh, Indian the Et, Joliet, yeah, Illinois. Yeah, Illinois. And, and, oh. and Indianapolis. And okay. Indianapolis. Okay, Indianapolis. I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, too, man. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, still, right I'm still recovering. And like, still like recovering. I said, uh, <laughs> my, my mom was born and raised in Waukegan, but she lived in Gary. She's and from my Waukegan? Okay. And my, bro and my, my, st my biological father, um, he's from Gary. That's crazy, bro. I was... I was so the reason I moved here, so yeah, you so probably yeah, basically know. We're, we brought your movement out west. So Gary is the sixth most dangerous city in the United States. Oh, yes, it is. Facts. That. Facts. But that's where Michael Jackson from. Yep. So yep. all the crackheads got rhythm. <laughs> Never born. Like it's cool. Stop it's a whole different universe. <laughs> and the it's meanest like the switch wire. game that side of the Mississippi. It's like the wire, but El Broadway. Yeah, exactly. It's just the wire with way worse teeth. <laughs> it's the wire with way worse teeth, I promise. So, <laughs> so um, I moved to Muncie, which is where he live at, and I figured to be able to help Gary out and to. Uh, my mother has bipolar and schizophrenia. Oh, wow. So to help man. bring awareness to people with mental illness and make Gary not fucked up, I need to be the next best comedian in the world. Right. Okay. So I uh, listened to this book called Think and Grow Rich. I hella recommend it. Napoleon Hill? Exactly. So you know it came out in 1937, and then, yeah, most millionaires read that. So I listened to it. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Right. And I, like, sold everything I owned and bought a plane ticket. And I moved, like, three months later. What's Damn, your favorite quote from that book? Um, I think it would have to be. That's a hard. That's a hard. That's a hard question. Because Napoleon I'll, Hill got a lot of good I'll, quotes. I'll, I'll, I'll name you mine. You can ask them. I'm a quote dude, so I like okay. quotes a lot, bro. I'll name like, you my favorite okay. quote from that book: "Conquer thyself or be conquered by self." Right. That's, that's Honestly, deep. that's look, my look, new look, favorite quote. I'll pick you back. I'll pick you back off of that. <laughs> Lupe Fiasco said, <laughs> "My greatest enemy <laughs> is my inner me." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like that. Too. <laughs> so, uh, Harriet Tubman said, "Nah." <laughs> <laughs> My favorite quote. Nah. nah favorite and quote. killed nah. her husband for being like, a coon ass yeah. nigga. Yeah. Like, <laughs> to say, "Nah." That's Harriet Tubman. Right? Exactly. That's my favorite quote. <laughs> That's tight. <laughs> so yeah. So I figured I, you know, I got to do that to. So I was doing comedy in Indiana for a few years, but I figured to, I want to be one of the greatest. So to yeah. do that, you got to live. Not in Indiana. <laughs> the, uh, the farmers and the, the Amish really ain't feeling yeah. the crackhead jokes like that. And yeah, and the racist. There's a lot of KKK going on over oh, there. Oh, yeah, that, that's Klan country right there. I was about to say. Oh, yeah. Mike Pence, if y'all didn't know, was the vice president of the United States, who was handpicked by Trump, yeah. was the governor of Indiana for the past seven years before that. Wow. So. Yeah. It ain't shit going down there. Actually, on September 1st, they got a, a, a thing going out. They finna have a KKK rally out there. Oh, out there in Indiana? In Indiana, yeah. The, when we going out there. Ain't that crazy? Oh so I'm finna gosh. go. What? Yep. <laughs> Hello? Ain't that crazy? Right now, 2018. It's a number you can call. It's on the internet. You can just call the number and it says, Welcome to. You watch uh, Call in the Ku Klux Klan, send us your ID, and it will call you back. Did you watch Black Klansman? I didn't yet, bro. I it's a good movie. Yet. I'm going. I'm going to go it's see a, it. It's bro. a really good movie. I'm going to go see it when I go home, actually. Okay. Actually, okay. When I go home. You buying so the ticket, weekend. right? You ain't gonna. You ain't gonna nah, do Spike Lee nah, like that, right? No, I ain't bootlegging like that. Right? No, not, not you do the right thing, right? <laughs> do the right do thing. You gonna? If it makes you feel, if it makes you feel any better, I have yet to see Black Panther, and I'm at least. Hello. I'm at least. Go buy the DVD. I'm okay. not going to bootleg it. Right. I'm not going to stream it right. on my laptop. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I just didn't, I didn't feel like being with all those people. Like, that, that motherfucker those been people? so. That's your people. No, I'm talking about like. Oh, those people. <laughs> what do you mean? Those people? All those people. I mean, like. <laughs> I'm playing with that you. Mother, that motherfucker was sold out for how long? Yeah. yeah. And I was yeah. like. It wasn't just black people in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, ah, man. I. I want to go i want to chill yeah. and yeah. relax and like really pay attention to it like yeah. you know i bet with, you with it was a fine honey would have told you like let's go see black parent you would have made any yeah. any way to make it happen you just you just he would have seen black cougar black bobcat black black cheetah black <laughs> no, nah, 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 what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm see, gonna buy see, it. See. I'm gonna buy it, and me and my girl gonna stay home. See. Oh, you and, and your girl, we, okay? Because yeah, yeah, I want to say it would have been any of your favorite Instagram models that you double tap on. She was like, "Hey, uh, man, let's go see Black Panther." You be like, "What? When?" If Bernie said, "Come through," oh, Bernie's Burgos, huh? Oh, I 
here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So that's your favorite IG model, no, Bernie's? That's not my. That's not my favorite IG. Or that's just his. That, that's just what he said right out the gate. Like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're not gonna get you in trouble if you say who, who, who's your favorite IG model, right? Yeah, no, yeah, 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 no, my, I'm gonna no. make sure. Keep it, keep you know, yo, my girl knows who my favorite like. Okay, because we all know black men don't cheat, right? We, we all can no, agree yeah, that. Yeah. It's not proven. I'm mad that exactly. he already got the James uh. jersey though. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I tell the truth even when I lie. You know what I'm saying? So, oh my god. Yes, black men don't cheat. Uh. I was mean, like, you saying, uh, but if you if you don't think about it, it makes sense. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You know, don't, th- I, don't every think too episode, much about it. Every episode, every episode, that line is on. These what? boys say that line what? every episode. I tell the truth that black, I, no, that black okay. men don't cheat. That's I mean, it was to him. It was it wasn't to y'all. It was to him. What? <laughs> hey, clin- clinically tested. Is this the truth? <laughs> I, I, I can't. I can't say nothing else about it. You know, I'm just, I will say this though. Like, what do you say? What's that line? I never cheated when I was with you. For the record. <laughs> now, once we ain't together, then I'm not liable to speak on those actions. Well, I plead the fifth. Together, so <laughs> technically, you ain't cheating if y'all but, ain't together. But the thing is, though, I think. It, a lot of people need to like really define what a relationship is, though. A lot of this people don't okay. know. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, what, like, what do you define a relationship? I I feel like if you gonna put, you know, time, energy, money, your feelings, your mind, and all that kind can of you, stuff. Can you stress the money part again? <laughs> the, the money. I mean, I just because, yeah, shit. and I mean, money isn't everything. Money isn't everything. But money definitely creates financial happiness you know and to be to be financially happy that 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 alleviates a lot of other pressure to to do because nobody wants to be in a relationship and not be able to do shit right you know nobody wants to be you know dating someone and they can't go out to dinner or they can't take a a a, a vacation or even when you get married you know and not be able to take a honeymoon or or the like and when you when you're a money when it becomes solely money dependent, is when everything else starts to deteriorate. Deteriorate, right. you know, because then it just becomes a business. Huh? It just becomes a business. Yeah, it becomes a it becomes a business decision, and that's not what a relationship is about, you know. So, uh, you said wait, say that last part again. <laughs> That's not what a relationship is about. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank it's you, sir. Ha- it's 50-50. We had a whole uh, <laughs> conversation about this before. A whole yeah. ass conversation. We got, uh, we got 120 whole uh, ass conversations. How do you feel about relationships? Um, having two, like a guy having two girlfriends in a relationship. Or a couple having a girlfriend in a relationship. <laughs> I mean... So basically, monogamous versus polygamous yeah. or, or, or polyamorous. Per- personally... Like me being me being Christian oriented, I'm not I'm not for it. I'm not for it. But if that's what makes you happy, by all means, yeah. I can't I can't judge you if you feel like having two significant others is what you want. If that if that's what you define as being happy, hey, you got it. Yeah. You got so you. if your girl was like, babe. I'm trying to can we, let's let's add to this. You know what, my girl, my girl, girl, my girl has asked me. Girl, <laughs> she has asked me, and I kept I kept with a buck with her. I was like, I was like personally, I'm. Not, she was like, what if we brought another girl into the situation? And it's a trick question because she wants to see what I said. It's a setup. Set it's a setup. Set 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 like, and I'm not. And like, <laughs> you looking at the author, the publisher, the illustrator, <laughs> like the bestseller of like, nigga, I know, I know the game. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, he wrote the I'm book, like, and he personally, and he thanked himself at the end. Yeah, yeah. Make sure y'all go check that out. You know what I'm saying? And he put himself on the acknowledgments. Before, yeah, yeah. Before, before, I want to give a special, <laughs> special thanks to myself and the sponsor myself. Yeah, like, oh my. I yeah. told her. I told her. I was like, I was like, I'm con- I'm content with just being with you. I'm content with that. If you feel like bringing somebody else in can can improve the relationship, I will try it just for the sake of like we're a part, we're a team, and we talk things out and we compromise. Yeah. So like, if you want to try that and you feel like it, it can, I'm all for it. 
But I'm not going to be the one to suggest it. I'm not going to be like, hey, baby. He ain't going to fall for the okie doke. You know what I'm saying? So if we out in the club or whatever, and you be like, hey, baby, I found this girl. She want to come home, whatever. I'm going to trust you. Right. But you ain't about to see me. Hey, girl. Baby, I seen this girl with that bad ass. Like, she trying to, she trying to I come through. Bernie's. <laughs> you know I seen Bernie's. I seen Bernie's bongo. But, but I did sell it. I was like, but we ain't bringing no nigga home. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a female or a no go. It's a female or a no go. <laughs> you know, she was, she was like, why? Like, I was like. Why not? <laughs> like, why? why? I was like, ain't no dude gonna, so. ain't no dude gonna one hundred percent agree to like, yeah, we can bring another nigga home. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless like, like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and again, yeah. if that's what you prefer, yeah. uh, let hey, me correct my nigga, myself. Not you wrong. Got it. Something. Yeah, yeah. He, he has something yeah, else if, with him. If you got, some, him. if you got the sugar in the swing that way, you got it. Yeah. Whatever floats your boat, you know, but yeah. Yeah, man, with our podcast, like just how we was talking about this is what we talk about on the podcast. Yeah. You know what I'm That's saying? Like yeah. it ain't it ain't nothing uh, new under the sun that we don't talk about. Yeah, you exactly. Know? So I like I said, it's it, it's it's a beautiful thing to see you know other people of our color, you know, go out and and you know, chase their dreams or like even if this is a hobby for y'all, like mm-hmm. the fact that you're Robert, doing it, it you know, Robert. shows like y'all just had somebody come up to you. Y'all didn't know, but he was yeah. like, Y'all the jig is up podcast. Yeah. He was like, Hey, I'm a subscriber. That's that's so you dope. know, like that's yeah. that's dope. Yeah, I, I love I love seeing that. And I'm 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 happy for y'all. I wish y'all Thank nothing you. but the best with this. You, you, right. you wanna know what, what what kept me going personally? Yeah, I I do, bro. We, we I'm track we track on like where people listen to us mm-hmm. and we got people in like Australia, Sally, Japan, man. Europe. Listening to as soon as soon as I found out, I was like, "Oh man, we got to keep turn. going." Yeah, like that just pushed me. I mean, it's not like a bunch okay? of uh, yeah. listeners, but it's something though. But it's yeah. Yeah. something yeah. like someone yeah. taking time out of their day right, on, to you know to listen noise. to us, and you know for them and, 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 and I guess in a trade off, we're probably making their day at work go by faster, or we helping them get through some shit, whatever that I don't know. Or they're stuck in traffic or anything like that. Or something we talk about is relatable. Or we at the gym, or they're at the gym or something. I try to not not don't listen to us at the gym because they might like drop a weight. <laughs> yeah, no, actually that Laugh, happened to laughing me. Laughing and shit. That happened <laughs> to me before. Like I remember, I was I used to listen to um our I would play back our uh, episodes while I was at the gym and I was bench pressing and um I didn't have a spotter because I wasn't like she you know going tough. live. Oh, you free I mean, I was going live. You yeah, free weight. Yeah, yeah. Push, <laughs> push, 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 push. But push. I remember I was going and something. You know how? Well, I don't know if you guys listen back to what you guys record, but when. When I do, sometimes okay, I catch something okay, that I don't okay, recall okay, happening okay. during the recording. But I'm like, did we just say that? And I'm like laughing and I dropped the shit on my fucking top lip. I was like, oh shit. So ever since after that, I said, I'll listen to it, but I'll only listen it to, listen to it during cardio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I could only listen to it during cardio now. You got some I, I, strong I don't teeth. Do it I was just gonna say you almost, <laughs> yeah, I almost had like a new dentist. <laughs> <laughs> you got some strong teeth. <laughs> That's your right there. top lip. It was the bar. I was like, you was about, to, was you was about this close to Grandma Gummy. Hey, baby. Grandma <laughs> 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 shit. But yeah, like. Right, yeah, so we suggest <laughs> listening to it during cardio, not while you're lifting. <laughs> as, as I said, um, I know y'all say y'all was. I feel like I'm interviewing y'all, though. It's, I think it's, it's gone both ways. And, and, and I'll right? say, and it's, it, that's just how it is. You know, like, I'm. I'm curious on, to hear everybody like else's journey and like how they get here. <laughs> um, and I know y'all were talking about like y'all want to get to like being a visual. Like to be honest, we we do audio and visual. Uh-huh. But the thing is, is like we got our camera, we got a tripod. You know, we we set that shit up, press record, we sit down, and we be like, all right, we ready? Yeah. All right. Three, two, one, and we go. There's no stopping it until we're done. And like I said, that's that's I think. That's what kind of like, like makes us like unique is that like guys, it's not done. it's not oh, scripted. Yeah. yeah, too much stuff no today in the media is okay. scripted. It's Damn. not you don't get that authentic Anthony authentic Barbara? feel yeah. and like the genuine feel of Andrew it. Andrew? You know, if you feel like oh Brandon, well they bleeped out this cuss word, 
well, what else did they probably right, cut out? Right, mm-hmm. Yeah, like you know, if somebody <laughs> if somebody just so happened to walk through like during the podcast, <laughs> hey, shit, fuck it. No. Right, right. <laughs> we had a studio any. We had a studio anyways. Yeah. Like, hey, right, that was. Oh, what's up, bro? That, that, hey, that's such and such, the rapper. Yeah. You know, make sure you check him out. Yeah. And, like, I look at it it's like, shit, yeah, that's pr- free promo, too, man. I, if I can so a quick so name like, drop. W- like, you guys recorded the studio? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we record, uh, it's called Strictly Lit Entertainment Studios. It's, uh, it's down in... The San Isidro Chula Vista area. It's that borderline. Oh, you down like, there. Yeah, we down there. We down there. <laughs> That's by me. Down, down dirty by South. Yeah, right Y'all there. Y'all in Mexico. Y'all in the dirty South. Yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, we in Mexico, right, but I bet you we be, our, our guts be full. They got that fire <laughs> food down there. You ain't never had no authentic. Right, Somehow cheese melting off the tortilla right after the <laughs> <laughs> No, I yeah, live, we are I down li- there. Yeah, I live. Well, I live in Imperial Beach, so I'm like right oh, here. Oh yeah, so yeah. You but mean we you record in downtown. But, but, yeah, yeah. Everything's way cheaper. But it's a really, really lit, um, like building. So okay. it's a really lit, like, uh, they got studios, like, uh, like three upstairs. They let us do our podcast there. They also do other events there too. So okay. that's what's up. Wait, a couple gotta, cannabis events. I gotta check it out. Is Just it case, is you know. it right yeah. there off of um, Picador and Smythe or not? That no, it's it's close. It's off a of buyer. Oh, it's buyer. Off of buyer. Okay. Um. Okay. You know where um um. What is it? Oh, Iris? Is the Iris Charlie transit station? station? Yeah, yeah. I'll say uh-huh. it's, and you know how, like, right across from the uh, the station, it's like that fence. Yeah. And it got all those buildings. It's in one of those oh, buildings okay. there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the address is 3025 Buyer Boulevard. You okay. Know? And, like I said, we, um, we're getting to wrap up doing episodes every week because Q's good. Q, our co host, he's going to go back for his master's in okay. uh, environmental engineering. That's what's up. You know, and so. We're gonna give you know give him that space of like okay you gotta go back to school we gotta give you that time so we're gonna go back to every two weeks but like you know we're our Just doors keep grinding it out yeah our do- our door is open to whoever you know if you feel like you want to come on come on there and you got a voice and you got something you want to say come through we it ain't gotta be strictly in, you know music or yeah. comedy you can be a, a, a gay hippie. <laughs> you know who smoke weed and talk about biology? Right. Yeah. And if you want to come on there, man, let's that, chop it up. There's an audience for it. Yeah, Pull there's up. an audience, there's an audience for it. Like now, I feel like since I've been on somebody else's podcast, man, like man, we gotta get the jig is up and an activated let's podcast go. collab. Like there you go. just I'm set down. up. I'm like, with it. I'm down. You know. I'm down. I was say we geared it up. Well, they're they're gonna go on tour. I, when I and when I mean by tour, I mean they're going out of town. Yeah, that's, yeah, why, yeah. that's why I call it when they go on tour. <laughs> like, like he. He's about to go to the Bay Area, and then later on, he's yeah. going to go to Cuba. Where are yeah, you going, bit, Asa? Where am I? Oh, Jamaica. I'm She's going, going to Jamaica. 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 Yeah, I'm on. Where, where are you going? I'm here. At Kmart. Shit, I'm here. <laughs> and I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. And, and hey. I'm, still, I'm still here, you know, so. You know, but that's dope, though, because, like, we're, uh, we're going to go back home to the crib, and, like, we're both going to eventually be on a uh, – a guy that we pretty much inspired to start his own podcast and like that's another thing that like i'm starting to like really like be grateful for is the inspiration that we're doing and you know just like you guys like you're you're doing something that makes you happy like yeah you know you don't never i guarantee y'all ain't never woke up it's like man fuck man i do not feel like doing this podcast like you know it's i'm I'm pretty sure some people i've never said that once in a while (laughs) <laughs> so I want to tell y'all, excuse, I want to tell y'all I appreciate y'all letting me on the uh, show. I got to go, I think, talk on the microphone over there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he about to crack some jokes. Okay. <laughs> hopefully. Hey, you, you, you got to crack some jokes, hopefully. man. Yeah. You got to crack he some jokes. He's going to that boy yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, shit, I'm going to be over there in a second, bro. I was all right. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to hold you guys up for anything. Like, anything. It's all good. It's all, all right. good. Yeah, I nice to meet you, man. I do, yeah, do want to ask y'all, like, what's y'all upcoming, like, what's, what's some... What are you looking to get out of this? Like, or are you looking to get anything out of it? Um, I mean, I mean, for me, <laughs> it's just like, hopefully, I could just like get people to think things through objectively. Through, you know, like how people say, give people the medicine through the candy, mm-hmm. and that's the thing I want to do. I just want to like give people like my insight and in how I see things. Not necessarily to make them agree with me, but to make them come to the middle end if they're on the polar opposite of how they feel. Like, if someone's, like, strictly monogamous and I will say, well, you know what? 
How about have you tried out polyamory? That poly life. Have you tried the poly life for a little bit? And if they and if they're like, you know, and then I just want you to like realize like, hmm, like maybe, you know, I'm not gonna go there, but I can see why they do Hold it. Hold on, wait, Marco. Is that Rampage Jackson over there? Where? Behind you. Uh-huh. Nah, oh, I don't no, know. No, no, oh, look alike. I was like, oh, bro, I I was, say, I, was about to, I was about to let him know. I was about to say, hey, that's my nigga. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> nah, we've we been pointing out lookalikes for yeah, the whole time. Yeah, you point out lookalikes. Man, yeah. I'll say, so let me ask you this. And who's your, who's your lookalike? Who do people say you lookalike? Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> Off top, Carlton from Fresh I Prince. mean, I can see it. You know, yes. Carlton was in the gym, you know, right. five days a week. I was like, I've gotten, uh, I was going to say, I got Eric Snow. Uh, the <laughs> basketball player. I've got Eric oh, Snow. Time out. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Yo, that <laughs> caught me off guard. I've got <laughs> Eric Snow. I've got Chameleon Air. Chameleon Air. Uh, nah, right. Terry, man. Uh, who else have I gotten? Uh, you didn't get Carlos Miller because of the beard? No, nah, I've gotten... Uh, do you, are you do you kind of pay attention to uh, UFC? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, Demetrius, uh, Mighty Mouse. Demi- I was gonna say I've got <laughs> yeah, Mighty yeah. Mouse. <laughs> yeah, you do kind of look like Mighty Mouse. <laughs> hey, I've gotten I've gotten quite a few lookalikes, man. I don't look like none of them. They look like me. <laughs> right. I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a one of one. I wouldn't right. say that to Mighty Mouse though. Mighty hey. Mouse is like what what. what? I remember what you said. Put your ass in the How about bar? this then? If we look alike, that means we siblings. So break me off some bread, man. <laughs> right, right. I'm part of the Rinse Too Damn High Committee. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's shit. San Diego for you. So, hey, but I wouldn't pay. I wouldn't. I, I, I love it, though. Like, you get what you pay for, man. Yeah. You know? My mom, first thing when mom, first thing my mama said when I told her I was moving out here, it was like, oh, my gosh, San Diego's expensive. And I was like, man, you're going to get what you pay for. Yeah. You know, you want good weather 95% of the time. You want... The, the career opportunities and, and the the scenery and all that kind of shit you got. If you was in charge of the cost of living out here, would you not try to make your money out of it too? Yeah. Oh yeah. You Definitely. know, of course. You know, if you really want this, you gotta yeah, pay for it. Exactly. Just like you want, just like in anything in life. Mm. If you want something that bad, you're gonna have to make the you're gonna have to make the sacrifices and you gotta pay for it. The thing that it is with me is that like I don't need all this luxury stuff. To like be happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Am I living? Am I living lavish? No. Am I? Am I? Is my head barely above water? Yeah. But like that's only because again I don't need I don't need to live five minutes from the beach. Right. And pay twenty two hundred a month for a shack. Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> I live down in San Isidro in New Mexico. Pay six fifty a month. All utilities paid. And catch, and if I got to catch a motherfucking trolley up to up to the you know to the beach. It's yeah. five dollars. Right, right. Yeah. You know how much money I'm saving? I don't need all that. Yeah. And I, I think too many people try to live above their means. Mm. And that's why they be like, oh, it's expensive. You know, they wanna they wanna live by the beach working a part time gig at the seven mm-hmm. eleven. That ain't gonna cut it, bro. Mm. You know, so yeah, they, they wanna they wanna pay six fifty for a three bedroom, two bathroom. And it ain't working like that, bro. Like, yeah, you, can do that, you can do that shit back at the crib, maybe. <laughs> this yeah. ain't Alabama, like yeah, yeah, yeah this, this ain't this ain't this Topeka, ain't, Kansas. This ain't Gary, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I was paying three thirty. Three thirty for a room. That's tight. You know, three thirty. <laughs> shit, but that was with six roommates. Oh yeah. Okay. Damn, you know yeah, saying? no like, peace of mind. No Can't sneak a girl in bro, there. It was Walter. It was me, Walter, and the rest of our homies. We lived in a six bedroom house. Uh, on campus, and at any given time, you would walk in our crib, and there'd be ten motherfuckers in there, <laughs> and eight of them didn't live there. One name wasn't on the lease. That sounds like a Dorn Tamen skit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bro, that's what, honestly, that's, I'll say, but we got this group. It's called Third Flow. Third Flow. Okay. Yeah, Third, third Flow. And I'm not one of the originators of it. I was. I kind of like, you know, grandfathered in because of me and Walter and how we met. Um. But it's an organization, you know, with comedy, music, uh, motivational stuff, you know, uh, everything. Like, and we try to spread positivity that you can do everything. You can do anything you want, you know, with the love. Hey, yeah, shout out to DJ Phoenix. He be doing our, uh, he be doing our Eagles bars. Eagles bars, you know, we got an Eagles, uh, 
football football fan. Oh, thing, okay. You know. so, yeah. shout, shout out, out to, to the Bird Gang. Shout out to the Bird Gang. Hey, <laughs> right, right, right. Our, our guy Zach is a he's an Eagles. He's an Eagles fan. Say, uh, yeah, he's our fifth member that ain't yeah. here. Right. He, he's like he's like our oh. Quentin Miller. You know, sometimes he'll give us uh, like topics on the low. I was about to say like one thing I don't tolerate. I do not tolerate the slander. So I know you were just gonna say we got we got one of our. I was about to cut it right. He was ready. The headphones about to come off. <laughs> Listen, yeah, like, hold up, bro. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather I'd rather for them to win it than the Patriots. So I was yeah, like, yeah, right, yeah, cool. yeah, that, yeah. Those hey, are that, facts. That shit was lit, though, man. Like, you know, so Meek yeah. Mill's fucking fucking uh, dreams and nightmares dreams made and it nightmares back to the made to it the back to the billboard. <laughs> top one hundred by that shit. I was like, yeah. yeah. Hold on, wait a minute. Y'all are not finished, <laughs> bro. Bro, you gotta see it too, man. You gotta see us, man. All right, man. Um, definitely, do it. Like, like I said, like you know, during the month or something. You know, uh, you know, our, most when of our guys gonna be going. When gone, do you so, guys record? Yeah. You said, I mean, you said twice a month. Um, like, what so day? Or do you guys just kind of go like? We we try to be it? as scheduled as possible and do them on Sundays. Um, okay. I feel we feel yeah. like Sunday is the is yeah. the easiest day to like get off from our everyday life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like me, I work, I work two jobs. I work at. Uh, Polo Ralph Lauren Factory Outlet in San okay. Isidro, and then okay. also work security at Park Nightclub. Okay. You know, <laughs> you yeah. Park, yeah. So you the plug? I say, so right, yeah. I, I will extend the offer. You know, if you do decide you want to come to Park, um, let me know. I'll yeah, put you I on my guest okay. list. Before. That's hey, where you listen. Like I, will like Jack City. I will say this really quick. Like, <laughs> like the spotlight don't be in like, New Jack City? <laughs> <laughs> don't be, don't be like a typical black person and show up at like 11, 30, 12, 30, because I can't do nothing. You got to be there by 11. Be no, punctual. No, 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 no. no, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. You, you, know. Either, well, you can either show up on time and get in free. <laughs> well, this he'll be he'll be there by 10. I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there, be there an hour early. Hey, I rather I rather show up early, yeah. get in free, yeah. then show up ten minutes late and have to pay twenty five dollars. Yeah, yeah. So it. you know oh. Johnny, right? Johnny Para. Para. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I'll say. Yeah, that's that's my I, dude. I, I, hey, Johnny, I, I, my dude too. He we we used okay. to coach together. He was he was the head coach when I used to coach high school girls basketball really? at Old Tight Ranch. He just left though. He just he left, left too. Yeah, he left Park. Okay, uh, well then I'm gonna need you to he be got my a full, plug now. He got a <laughs> uh, he got a full time job with like the uh, the school corporation. That's what's up. That's yeah, so that's he got that up. he got that career job, and I was like, man, I'm all for it, bro. That's what's up. You know. All right, but yeah, speaking about punctuality. There was this, I don't know, with the Del Mar, they had a masterful marketing campaign to get your ass there on time. Because the Ziggy Marley Fest uh, happened, I think, like last weekend. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you go there during the racing that's going on, all you have to do is pay like $5 and you're in the festival. No problem. But if if you don't get there by the last race... You had to pay thirty dollars to get into the Ziggy Marley Fest. Damn. So motherfuckers was cutting it close. They running into the ticket booth. Oh, I got ten minutes. I got five minutes left. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah, they trying. Yeah, yeah, they trying yeah. to save that money. They ain't trying to pay thirty. So that is like, if you want motherfuckers to be there on time, mm-hmm. especially like that, like tell them to come in during the, another event. You just chill and you're in there. Mm-hmm. That is perfect marketing. So I had to give it up to the to the folks out there at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. On hey, that. that's, a, that's a learning. I would say I've learned like watching everybody else, man. That's what that's why I'd be so open to like networking with people because you can learn stuff. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, learning like, you know, nitpicking, you know, stuff that can help you grow. Okay. You know, uh, but really quick, I know I've been taking up a lot of y'all time and shit. Uh, the last thing I like is I wanted to get to know about y'all is like, is this all that y'all do? Like, is anybody like an artist? Like, because again, any way I can support, I'm all for it. Well, um, for me, sometimes I do a little part time acting mm-hmm. on the side whenever, you know. If I can do it, I do it, you know. So I, I do that, I dabble into that. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to get into more things on a more op- entrepreneurial side of things. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, man, you know, we all got day jobs and, you know, that's yeah, what we all got. Out. Yeah, we all got lives. Like, yeah. I'm, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you preaching to the choir with that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, what about you? I work with um, military children. Okay. I've been doing that for 11 and a half years. Um, wow. I've worked with all ages, um, but I, my main job was working with five to 11 year olds. And now I just that, for more a year. More of that at risk. More like that. Is it more uh, like at risk? No, or no, no. 
It's basically like a boys and girls club, but strictly military school. It's an after okay. school program. Oh, okay. okay um, okay, but now I work with the teens, so ages twelve to eighteen. So which mm. I enjoy so much more. It was cool with the little ones, but I feel like um, a handful. Ye- well, not necessarily. I guess it's just my passion is to work with teens and to kind of help guide them to their, you know, to their goals and their hobbies and stuff. And then I, I drive Lyft on the side. Okay, okay. And I got a few things that I'm working on the side. I've been keeping it on a hush because I'm waiting for it to unfold. And Hey, yeah. make more moves, less announcements. Exactly. Make more Facts. moves, less announcements. Exactly. Facts. You know, uh, one of the things that I've learned is, uh, and it's kind of like through my, you know, spirituality, is that, like, when you talk about all of your moves and you talk about everything that you got going you 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 jinx yourself because it doesn't have to happen and it could very well not happen you know so when you like there's a difference between speaking things into existence and then like like i said you know just saying oh i'm about to do this yeah i'm about to do that you know so i i feel you on that like you know don't 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 show don't show your whole hand yeah, like exactly. don't show them everything yeah. you know and when the time is right you'll exactly. present like ah gotcha bitch yeah you know? right right uh, yep. <laughs> i always you though? i always follow the code real g's moving silence so yep. yeah, yeah i keep yeah. that close to the vest like lasagna <laughs> yeah that's too easy how about you well i was formerly a jamaican uh with like seven eight jobs in la but um, I'm trying to get back into art. I, you know, I I, uh, I used to do a lot of drawing, mm-hmm. so I'm trying to get back into that and then kind of trans, trans transfer it to media art. Right, right. Yeah. Hey, well, I'm gonna say this though. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm I, again, like I said, I'm part of the Rents Too Damn High committee. Right. But if you got some art that you want to just like, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, my brother, here you go, so I can like hang it up and during on our podcast or whatever. Yeah, we do. You know, like I'm all for it. I'm okay. all, I'm all for it. Like, y'all got stickers. Um, Man, throw me a shirt. I'll hang that motherfucker <laughs> up, you know, on the podcast. Like, hey, man, hey, you know, whatever the case that. may be, okay. Okay. you know, like like me, myself, um, I've kind of got into the entrepreneur side. You know, I've started my own business and brand of uh, management, marketing, and apparel, MMA. Okay. That's what that oh, really okay. is. Oh, okay, gotcha. It ain't fighting, you know. <laughs> I, I mean, if I got to throw the hands, I <laughs> <laughs> ready. Know? Yeah, yeah. You're going to look like uh, Oh but boy, yeah, it's uh, management marketing and apparel. Um, this actual this, the the broke five broke shirt is one of my homies that I grew up with. He lives in Texas. He started his own apparel company. It's called Rare Form Urban Wear. Uh, okay. He got a lot of dope like urban designs. You know that that's really catered to black people. You know and empowering black people. But at the same time, it's not something that you know John Smith can't wear. You know, right, right, right. yeah. You know. Um, the hat that actually, but the hat that I I'm wearing now is something that I designed, um, and the concept is a hundred likes, you know, doesn't it's a hundred G's over a hundred likes, like, and I think that ties into like social media. Everybody's so focused about likes and, and getting the most likes, getting the most comments. I'm not I'm not focused on that, man. Let yeah. me get that bag. Right, right, I'm, right. I'm gonna get that bag. That bag is gonna help me out way more than a hundred likes. You know, and too many people be focused on like trying to impress others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, impressing other strangers. You know. Yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're, they're strangers. You know what I'm saying? But you know, like I said, I started my it. I, my best advice to you, bro, with that whole entrepreneur stuff, is like if you can do it, do it, bro. Do it. You know, I don't, I'm not the most knowledgeable thing to this. Like, nobody's, everything that I've gotten to at this point, I've learned on my own. I haven't had nobody give me the structure and the guide, the guidance to do it. I'm learning. And, you know, if I fuck up, I fuck up. And I, but it, it's what you do after that. You know, I've learned what not to do. I've learned, you know, what I should do. Yeah. But the main thing is, is like, just, if you can do it, just do it. And, you know, trust the process and enjoy the journey. You know, so that's my that's my advice to you. That's my advice to everybody. That's what I've learned throughout this podcast and, you know, talking to y'all, you know. And, again, like I said, I appreciate y'all for having me. Man, yeah, thanks for coming know, through. Uh, yeah, I got hey, man, let the world know who you are again. Hey, again, it's your boy, Mac2301, straight out of Indiana, repping that six side. Oh, really quick, six side is the name. And I got the name. 
because six is the common denominator between my hometown's area code of 765 and San Diego 619. So no matter where, no matter where you're from or if you're from a small town of mine, which is 70,000 or the ninth biggest city in America, San Diego, with two million people, you can go out and you can chase your dreams. You can do what you want to do that makes you happy. And you don't, you don't let nothing stop you because... If you want something, if you want something in life, you're going to do everything you can to make sure that shit happen. Yep. You will never accept no. So that's what Six Side is about. That and everybody eats. You know, so we can yep. all be successful, yep. you know, without having to yep. step on any other, each other's toes. So, you know, I guess, like I said, it's Mac2301. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Um, Six Side MMA, Instagram, Twitter. We got the clothes. And last but not least, the Activated Podcast. Yeah. You know, check us check us out. And like I said, if y'all want to come through. Yeah, I'm going to pull up one day. Yeah, hey, pull up. I'm going to hey. pull up to your podcast hey. and, a, and to Park. Pull up. Okay. <laughs> and, pull up to park. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm trying to try this food down here. That, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, man, get Melting cheese. Yeah, get, get you these $1.50 tacos. Hey. Like, yeah, street tacos, man. <laughs> Um, and like I said, I work at Polo too, so you know if y'all need to, okay. yeah, 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 you know, you know plug we'll everywhere. Okay. <laughs> you know what? You know what? That's funny because like that's what they really used to call me. Like, cause again, I worked at Foot Locker, I worked at Best Buy, I worked at, uh, uh, I worked at bars back home at the crib, and it's like no matter what, like I knew something, mm. or I knew, or I knew somebody, or I was working somewhere yeah. that like helps you out, you yeah, know. So again, yeah. you know, if any of those places y'all want to pull up. I said, just let me know. I got y'all. It's all love. You know, it's all love and support, man. Shout out to the plug. All right. Yeah, yeah, shout, out, yeah. shout out, shout out, man. Thank you for coming through, hey, man. Ain't no problem, yeah. man. Hey, the jig is up. It's jiggy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the jig is up. It's jiggy as fuck. I like that. Hey, yeah, that's you know what I'm saying? So, again. We're going to have to coin that. Okay. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, just make sure you... Just make sure in the in the in the writer's credits, y'all be like, right? hey, you know, Mac two three zero one. You know what I'm saying? But hey, nah. Or you can leave that on the review. Yeah, on, hey, on, hey, a, hey. on a review on iTunes yeah. or Facebook if you want to leave it on the review. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know what I'm about to do right now? Uh, as soon as I get to my charger, I'm about to go to uh, YouTube, type in the jig is up, get that subscription. Yeah. And y'all got a playlist? Y'all got a playlist up already? I mean, we, we're on YouTube. We got a whole bunch of episodes up. We're on SoundCloud, Stitcher. Google Play, everything, Every, anything, everything, everything we can get our hands on. Radio, we're, we're in there. We're on iHeart. We on Spotify. Spotify. Like we ain't playing. We trying to get anywhere, hey, anywhere hey, they can hey. find us. Hey, where y'all? Really quick, where y'all do y'all shit at? Man, we do that. We do it in downtown at the homies crib. Okay, the safe house. Hey, that's, that's hey low key, that's how we started. We started at Q's crib. Yeah. We started in his living room, and then like. Networking, we know we networked into uh, doing a studio or people, uh, a producer. Uh, yeah. Shout out JY Productions, he's the producer and engineer of the studio. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, I knew him and he was like, Hey, we're about to open the studio, we'd like for y'all to come do the podcast there, you know, type shit. So, yeah. like, ours was the opposite, we started at the studio and then yeah. we, I was about to say, this. Yeah, yeah, we, say, Y'all did the yeah, opposite, yeah. Hey, yeah we, we, st we were uh, at David's Heart Foundation studio, yeah, where Sound Collage, Sound Collage, yeah. Sound okay. Collage yeah. our engineer was Shadi. Hey, but Shadi. the fact y'all being consistent is yeah. is the most important thing and i i, yeah. I commend y'all for that you know for not letting none of that shit none of that shit fall to the wayside you know yeah. but again i said i'm gonna definitely pull up on y'all one day yeah um you know and let's, let, let, let's, say, let's try to find a way to do a collab man i want to yeah. see i want to see all of us succeed so you know i need that i need the jig is up activated collab you know <laughs> we'll, we'll figure some shit out man but hey I appreciate y'all, man. Much love to y'all, man. And right. uh, like I said, bless up, bro. Bless up. All Thank right. you. Yes, Thanks yes, for coming through. Thank you. It's all love. Yo, what up? What's good, people? She got him easy. So at this point, I had to step away from the barber fest. Um, you know, I had to head to work. Got to make a living. Just wanted to make sure I give my shout outs before we continue. Wanted to shout out the guys from the Activated Podcast, Mac 2301, Real Walter Ford, and the third guy, he he wasn't exactly there at all, but shout outs to GDQ, the one. And uh I'm trying to pull up guys. I'm trying to be definitely trying to be a guest for sure. So I, I will be hitting y'all up. Shout-outs to Tim Nababa, that's B-A-B-A, -B -A, 
<laughs> owner of Legends Barbershop. Definitely coming through there uh, really soon. And uh, shout out to my guy, Dami Young. I wasn't there to interview, uh, but I heard I heard everything. Heard you did well. Wish you uh, wish you more success, brother. Shout outs to Louis Reynoso, the founder of the Barber Society in LA. That's dope to hear. You know, you got a resource for. I guess it's kind of like a network, huh? I don't know, but I just I just want to say shout outs to you. And yeah, I don't know if I forgot anybody else, but. I guess I'll leave it at that. All right, y'all. Enjoy the rest of the interviews. Peace. Yeah, man. All right. So here Sorry, we are. Sorry, I didn't mean the sun. Nah, I'm good. I've been in the sun all day, so I'm good. We're back from our long break. All right, we have another guest in the building. Well, outside here in the canopy. In the sweltering in San Diego heat. Yes, it gets hot out here, too. Uh, could you let the world know uh, who you are, man? Yeah, yeah. My name is Luis Reynoso, and I'm the founder of Barber Society. We're a resource-based organization out of Los Angeles. Okay. Oh, if you don't mind, you could just bring the mic as close to you as possible. All right, you let me know. Oh, there you go. Hey, yeah, 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 that's better. Yeah, I can hear you That's a little it. bit better. Okay. I'm yeah. trying not to like. I always get told like my voice carries, so I'm trying to like. Like, come <laughs> at you guys. <laughs> nah, you good. Nah, you good. You good. So, Barber Society. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what was was Barber Society about? You know, when I got into the industry, the barber industry, I had a lot of questions. Like, no one in my family had ever done this. I didn't know anybody that had really done this other than my barber. So, mm-hmm. I had a lot of questions about um, the craft, uh, the business, just everything. Being an entrepreneur, like before barbering, like I always say that I was a professional quitter. Like I did every freaking job that you could think of. You know, like worked LA Zoo for a day, Starbucks two weeks, whatever. And so, the, you know, I, I felt like I had so many questions and like I really wanted to do this. And, and the more I looked for answers, the more dead ends I would hit. Like there was no community. There was nowhere like to go and plug up to people that were doing what I wanted to do. Right. And so that's where the idea came for this. So it was just out of necessity, basically. And, um, you know, it's, it's, we're here. I, we launched in 2012 and um, we started with just doing like local networking events. And now, you know, we produce events all over the states. I get to travel internationally and teach, and it's just kind of turned into this whole other thing, uh, other than just cutting hair. Okay, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it just started off with something small, and you just like, you yeah, like spread just an out idea, to other things you know? in a year. Yeah, oh, like no. you know, I, I literally like got into barbering, and right away was just like, this is what I want to do, mm-hmm. and and from there it was just like I would literally sit in my barber chair at school because we got to clock in fifteen hundred hours to be licensed in the state of California and take a state li- uh, mandated exam. And I think yeah. that's more that's more rigorous than being a cop in the state of California. Yeah, it actually takes longer to be a licensed barber wow. than than a cop. Crazy. So, and we gotta rethink that a little bit. <laughs> that's yeah. Nuts. yeah. So you know, once I was there, it was like you know, what can I do? And I would literally just sit there. I'm very pen to paper. Like I feel there's a lot of power in seeing your your ideas and your thoughts written down in your handwriting. Yeah. And so literally it was just me like with my headphones in, just writing things down of things that I think would be cool or things that I thought like events, education, uh, apparel, like just different ways that I could build layers into my career. And I did that. Like it took me two and a half years to finish barber school. Like it really takes the average person about 11 months to, to a year. But it was just like I, you know I was working full time, just trying yeah. to get myself through school, like chipping away at it. Right, and so right. in that time, all I did was just, like, prepare myself, like, you know, work on my craft, you know, got into a shop and started working, like, getting that hands-on experience, talking to people to, about what I was going to do. So when I got my license, it was just, like, gas all the way down, you know, like, yeah. let's go. So, so you mentioned that you're a professional quitter. So <laughs> former. Former <laughs> professional quitter. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, yeah. get it right. Yeah. 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 Former. Uh, so uh, former uh, professional uh, quitter. Update the status, please. <laughs> <laughs> So, so being a former professional quitter, like, bar- so being a barber and that just, you know, that just changed the whole tune because of the community and how tight-knit things are and the camaraderie of being a barber. You know what it was? Barbering was the thing that shifted my mindset. Like, barbering, like, before I would quit, like, if it was easy, I would be, like, uninterested and I would quit. If it was hard and it would challenge me, I would quit, right? So barbering was the first thing that challenged me from like the very first moment. And even though I wanted to quit, like I would just show up. Like 
I felt like it was pulling me as opposed to me having to push myself to do it. Yeah. yeah. And that was a very first in my life. And so I actually allowed myself to fall into it. And the more I fell into it, the more I thought, like, the more I saw, hey, if you just keep going and build that discipline of being able to, like, I feel the game is not about speed or skill or agility. It's about endurance. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how much can you take? Yes. And so that's what barbering did for me. And that's why I'm so diehard about it because... I'm not the only one in my industry. There's a lot of people in my industry that barbering really like saved our life. It really gave us a sense of purpose and it gave us that vehicle to channel all that energy that we all have, like whether it's creative. Because I think even in business, business is, you know, it is creative. You have to be strategic. You have to come up with different yeah. things to yes. like grow mm-hmm. your business. So it gave us something to take all that energy and like channel that. And I think like, you know, barbering, you can't cheat it. You yeah, can't yeah. wake up no. one day and just yeah. know how to do it. Like, you no. really got to put in the time, you know? It yeah. doesn't matter how easily it comes to you. Yeah. You cannot cheat the process. And so, for me, the discipline of learning this craft, it just translated to everything in my life. Like, I'm talking about because of barbering, I started, like, my physical transformation. Like, when I started, I was, like, 360 as, a, you know, my weight. Now I'm down, you know, almost 80 pounds just from oh, that, wow. like, Everything was the mindset, like it shifted. Like once I wanted to get better at my craft, then I wanted to be like able to perform my craft more. So I meant that physically I had to have the endurance, right? Yeah. And then from there it was like, once you have the physical endurance and the stamina, it's like you have the energy to do more. So then the more you do, the more hyped up you are. Cause yeah. you're like, yeah. man, there's so many opportunities. You I, know think, what I, mean? I think what? entrepreneurship and fitness go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah like you have reason. to. Yeah, and and you know, in my industry, you know, I was told that this is a podcast where anything goes. And you got to be yes. very honest. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Right. So our motto is nothing to say. Yeah, yeah. so go, <laughs> go, go all yeah. out. It so our bad. industry, it's the beauty industry. Exactly. So what do you get judged on? Aesthetics, how things look, how you look, how you present yourself, and it's like you don't have to do it because of what people are gonna think about you. Mm-hmm. But I think ultimately it all ties in. Like for me, it was just like I just want to be healthy and I want to be able to do all the things that I say that I want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and I use this vehicle to be able to do that. Cause where I was at before, I, I don't, I don't, I'm sure I would have been able to still do things, but not to the extent that I do it now. You know, and so right. that's that's really that's really what it was about. It was just more about. Man, I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to... I kept saying, like, I'm doing these things for legacy. And then it was just like, if you continue down the path that you're going, you're not really going to be around as long as, you know, you think that you are. Yeah. So it was just shifting that gear. And, like, like I said, using my career as, as like, that, that, be, like, that anchor to say... How can I improve, not just in this, like once I started seeing improvement in like my career, then it was like, how can I improve in my life? How can I improve in my finances? How can I improve? Like it just like, it was just like a ripple effect in my life. Man. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, you sound like you're just giving us a whole game about <laughs> how it just changes your mindset and, and everything about that. So mm-hmm. like, as far as like Barber Society, how did you like, you know, I see that you got apparel yeah. and you going around teaching everybody. So like the satisfaction of helping people one way or another either if it's from making them feel good when they get off the booth or even teaching them and giving like other barbers pointers and stuff it seems like you take a lot of pride and joy into that yeah um you know when you're a professional quitter you're not motivated by anything yeah mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like money yeah. doesn't motivate you the consequence or the reward doesn't motivate you when did you realize this was your calling um so i had to go through like a life-changing experience to, like go to a barber shop you know it was like i went from long hair to a skin tight fade you know what i mean like uh-huh. and that whole thing set a whole self up in a brand in, like, new person huh? yeah exactly <laughs> you know and the world treats you a little bit different and like it was just like a lot that came with it but the feeling that i got like just like being at the barber shop yeah. it was it was something i'm like man that's dope that you could give that to people like you just make somebody feel good just based off of what you do you know and that's really what kind of opened up that door for me to to like get into it but my real job like i always say um a lot of people think barbering is about hair or or cosmetology is about hair but really we're in the human business oh okay you know is what we're dealing with is a human that that hair grows you know out of basically you know what i mean and you guys are like low-key therapists too yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. you're one of the. Exit, uh. <laughs> yeah, right. Like you're one of the. We're one of the few industries where like, it's okay for me to like not know you at all and like touch your face. 
<laughs> right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, like, like in, a, in, a, in, a, in a masseuse. You yeah, know, exactly. Like, yeah. So it's like there has to be, in order for you to do that, there has to be a level of comfort there. Yes. And I think once you establish, to me, comfort just means trust. Yeah. Yes. And so you establish that trust, and then the layers kind of just start, yeah. you know. It, it falls in. Yeah. And I, sorry to cut no, you off, and I was just having this conversation with our videographer, Amelia, in the car earlier, and I said, not, not just guys, but most guys in general, they will cheat on their spouse, they'll cheat on their girlfriend, but they will not cheat on their damn barber. And I'm like, yo, like, you have to really trust that person. Like, that, I feel like, not saying all men, don't even, I don't want to hear it, Marco. We've seen the <laughs> meme, we've seen the meme. <laughs> but most men, they really would, they'll cheat on their girlfriend before they cheat on their barber. Yeah. That's one, that, that's it's one, hard to that's find one, a good barber. Yeah. 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 That is one relationship you don't want to lose. Yeah. So you got to remember, that haircut's the reason why they got there in the first place. <laughs> right. Exactly. So why would they want to yeah. abandon the person who's giving that haircut? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's just so funny because. It's uh, simple I'm, mathematics, if you ask me. It's amazing how one haircut can like you know change a person and stuff like that like how to change your career and simply one haircut may have a relationship with your barber it's just it's just the fascinating to me yeah how i mean that works I, you know the the generational part like i've only been in the industry for almost nine years so to okay. industry standards i'm considered a, a rookie a, a novice right wow wow because this That's is crazy this is a hardcore industry like you yeah. have generations of barbers you know and so when you look at people that have been doing it 30 40 years like my mentor the first one that you know the first person that mentored me he had like for example clients that there were kids when they started with him and now he was cutting up their kids like he was getting invitations to the christenings and to the weddings and to like you're part of the family at that point wow yeah I, uh shout out to k k i think he's been cutting my hair <laughs> for about 10 10 years over yeah. a decade now yeah that's crazy how that happened and he's seen me have uh braids yeah just go through the yeah regular ass Caesars and goatees now you trimming beards yeah so yeah. It's, it's crazy like our relationship I know I'm gonna have him on the show and I know I mentioned it earlier but you know it just it's crazy how you go through a metamorphosis with your with your client yeah. and you see the growth process and they see yours too because I've yeah. seen I've seen came from being you know a single guy living yeah. the life and now he's married kids event so. producer <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah event yeah. producer yeah. now yeah me podcasting and actually being a part of his event along with my partners too so yeah it's, it's crazy how that all happens i think you know like to speak on that is, is just like you're a perfect example of what these relationships turn into yeah like when you met him and he met you like i'm sure he never knew you were going to have a podcast and you didn't know that he was going to be hosting events and yeah, you guys yeah. would be collaborating right see that's funny how this one haircut he came <laughs> back yeah. and look at the outcome like yeah that's that, that's the best thing about having like uh, you know, a good, good haircut and stuff like that it changes some people. It makes them get yeah. that feeling, that feel good feeling, you know. So, yeah, all this stuff that's going on, like, that's, that's it's, it's powerful. So. I mean, I'm pretty sure it didn't hurt him. It didn't hurt for, for me being his walking billboard every time I step out there and people come up to me, like, hey, who cut your hair? Exactly. Who, who, who did that? Okay. And I'm like, I have people, who, like, I had a couple of co workers who come, come down there, get a haircut from him and everything. So it's like, it's not like, you know, I'm just a loyal account client. I, like, I was a client that brought him other clients as well. Yeah. So, yeah, the, yeah. you know, referrals and stuff like that. So, that, that, you that know, I think even out. today, like, people underestimate that. I, I feel because social media is, like, such a big platform now. But at the end of the day, like, the old school stuff, like, the word of mouth, yeah. it mm -hmm. just. You just can't beat that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like you said, being that walking billboard, I think relationships is really are what our business is, is really founded on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, social media because that was a good thing to piggyback off of. Now, as far as social media, how does that affect your industry to this day? You um, think it helps? It doesn't hurt? Like, how do you feel about I think it does media? both, like any other industry, right? I think when you have social media, you have an open platform and people can share whatever it is that they want to share. I think social media for us, what it did is kind of took off the lid to our subculture and it exposed barbers at much more than just hair cutters uh -huh. or, you know, hairstylists. That's much more than just hair cutters. Yeah. Um, but I think what it also did within our industry was it created kind of like maybe like a mainstream culture and a more like underground culture uh -huh. which we've seen it in other industries whether it's like hip-hop or any other thing like that uh -huh. that's very true in the barber industry um so you know i think the way that i view things is every, everything has its, its place for a reason and i think that 
you know, personally, I feel like it does help. You can reach a broader audience, um, but it's all about how you utilize it and how you view it. Mm -hmm. I was one of those people that in the beginning, like, I, you know, I didn't necessarily use it the way that it was supposed to. Uh -huh. It was more of like, you know, I, it's a billboard. I'll post something up. If people comment, I wouldn't comment right. or respond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Laura Kmar stepping out. He about to do his modeling gig. He's all right, all right. For the, he, he's participating <laughs> as a model for the king, pig. for the king <laughs> battle, king and queen battle of SD. Yep. And then I think uh, after the event is over, we interview the king and queen of uh, SD in the barber scene. So, yeah. If you come to a barber event, like you're bound to like get caught up, like cut up by something. You know, that's the whole thing. <laughs> you know, if you hang out in the barber shop long enough, you're eventually gonna yeah, get your hair cut. Get cut. Yeah. And that's what's gonna happen <laughs> in a matter of minutes. He's taking one for the team. That's what's up. I wouldn't say taking one for the team. I think these are professional licensed nah, he's about barber to get shops, fresh. and he's no, about no, to get fresh. I know, but what, what I mean by that is like volunteering, like. It's dope because it's like, yeah, we're here podcasting, but then it's like dope because he's actually participating as Absolutely, well. You know yeah. what I mean? So, and he could have been like, like, nah, like there's some people that are yeah. really just won't risk it or like just won't like, even like like we said, people that have already have their particular <laughs> barbers are just like, yeah, yeah I can't do this. Yeah. Like you know, yeah. so the fact that you know he just like. All right, I'll do. I think it's the. Oh, this is my song right here. Sorry. Okay, no. Yeah. Hey, hey, no, no, no. Don't acknowledge the song because we're not trying to get copyright strikes. And I think <laughs> in the beginning of the podcast, I'm going to let people know we do not own the music or any None. professional. Uh, we are doing a live show. We are not at fault for what the DJ is playing in the background. We only can yes. control that's coming out of our mouths yes. in this on this show. We just work here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just working in an event. I didn't, if they're playing live, you don't fault me. Don't take this down, YouTube. Don't take this down, SoundCloud. All right? <laughs> don't take it down, please. Don't take it down, all right? It's some good content. Please. Forget the music in the background. We're not getting paid off of that. <laughs> We're not getting paid, period. <laughs> So but I'm gonna have to reiterate that when we do their editing, yeah. <laughs> editing stuff. But um, you know, anything else that you wanted um, to discuss? Anything that's on your mind? You know, giving you the soapbox platform. I know, right? On your mind, you know. You know, I think my message um, beyond barbering, and beyond anything, is just really to like. Just try to support people and Definitely. just be that person that maybe I needed when I was coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say that, like, once you get to know people's stories, it's really hard to close the door behind you. Yeah. And so, ultimately, I believe that there's enough for everybody and um, that you don't really have to tear each other down to, like, you know, build yourself up. And yeah. Yeah. that if you can, in some way, somehow, I think in a world full of influencers today, like, that we have to acknowledge that. We can all influence someone in a positive way, and the little teeny tiny things go a really long way. Yeah. So even if it's just paying somebody a compliment or maybe just like a simple smile or like a hello, even if you don't know them, yeah, I really feel like we're all fighting our own battles in some way, exactly. somehow. I agree. And I just like to be the kind of person that when people encounter me, they leave feeling better about the fact that I crossed their path and not like, oh, mm -hmm. I wish I would have dodged you. I wish, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, swerve no, yeah, on you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, if I could say anything to anybody out there, is dig deep, bite down hard, keep going after it. This is coming from a professional quitter who literally, like, didn't think much about life or about themselves. And um, I just happened to continue to, like, hang in there till I found something that I was passionate about, and I ran with it. That's so You know, sad. and I wish you guys a world, a world of success. I really, really mean that. I hope to have you guys at our show at Modown. When is this? It, November 18th. So we have Modown Bar Exhibit. Let us know. Let yeah. us know. Definitely. Right. But thank you for giving me the opportunity. Of it was course. awesome oh, hanging no out with you. Thanks for being here. And then guest. one more time, let people know who you are. Yeah, uh, Louis Reynoso. You guys can find all my info. Louis Reynoso, R E Y N O S O, uh, dot info. All right. And, uh, it's Barber Society LA on Instagram, Barber Society Org online. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Appreciate over. you guys. Thank, thank you so much. You. All right. You have a good one. Thank you. Take care. Ready? All right, now I'm pretty sure you subscribe by now. <coughs> subscribe. But do another thing for us. Like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter and IG at JiggasUpPod. If you have a question, you can leave it in the comments or add us. Also, if you want to hear more from us, like reading your emails, go ahead and send us an email at JiggasUpPodcast at gmail.com, and we'll read it out on the show on the following episode but most importantly share 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 because sharing is caring baby all right peace 
All right, we're back. It's been a long break, but man, uh, I've been wanting to get this brother on the show for the longest, man. Uh, long he's in, time coming. I man. talked about it in the last episode, man. Hey. No further ado, man. We got a guy, Dami Young, in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Woo -woo. What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? <laughs> Not much, man. We good. We doing Slipping. good. Doing good, man. Thank you for ha being on the show with us. Of course, of course, man. It's all love, man. We go back. We yeah. good. Yeah, we go way back. We go back. <laughs> go back. 80s back. No. <laughs> oh, 80s back. You see what I did? Oh, okay. Oh, I like, I like yeah, the see. reference. That's Here where they made me at. Yeah. Come That's where <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, don't get mad. Hey, we have, we're having a little light skin moment hey, right man. now. <laughs> low key, low key. Just, uh, just only just low key. <laughs> Said, Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Don't let the light skin slander. Hey, yeah. I, I, I hold it down when I'm on the show. Yeah. Because I'm the only light skin one there. Mm. Pretty much. <laughs> but With it's dark skin. A, but, but I always say. Oh, man. But isn't it, it going on rats and stuff yeah, like but that? Like the always, dark skin come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say. That's real shit. I'm like, oh, man. I always say that I'm light skin with dark skin tendencies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, the that. Drake Drake took my line, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, yeah, when he said that, I felt it for real, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, so man, what's new with you, bro? What's going man, on? Man, just a lot of growth in the last couple of years, just honing in and, and building with my craft and really learning music and just trying to be a, a better person all the way around. You know what I mean? So, just in general, just just working on myself and, and being a better person for my family, for my friends, and for my community. Okay, I mean, what, what what were you doing that made you feel like, oh, shit, I'm fucking up, I need to do better? I mean, I don't think I was doing anything wrong. It was more so just young mistakes and, and being misguided mm -hmm. and just um, getting caught up in, uh, I guess you could say, like, ego and things like that and mm -hmm. um, dealing with, um, I don't want to say the people I was dealing with was wrong, but um, sometimes when you get certain certain personalities around each other it can it can bring out not not necessarily the best in everybody you know what i mean so yeah right so yeah so like you would just say like you know just being around certain people certain uh toxicity levels that were brought out of you that you didn't know until afterwards like in hindsight or i think in a in a sense so i see so how i kind of like psychoanalyze myself because i mean in order for somebody to be better you had to analyze you had to identify with yourself what mm -hmm. you need to work on so it's like i think it stems from you know my upbringing um mm -hmm. from you know my dad passing to not having that full complete family and having that that wanting for a full family and you know being raised in a foster home with my grandparents not being my biological grandparents mm -hmm. um and my mom just yeah. recently found um her biological mother so there's a lot of like things home. like that and i really feel like it really does have an impact on a person's personality exactly, yeah. and um are you guys Eventually, how they how they express yourself and yeah. what their definition of love is. To be honest with you, mm. there you so are. so how did that impact you being a father First today? Close, Man, so as you guys know, I mean, I have I have a daughter and I have a son. I feel like, you know, I don't know how religious you guys are, but I feel like each each child has taught me a different lesson. Like with my daughter, I feel like. Over time, time, as she got older, I had to learn how to respect women a lot better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With my son, you know, I had to learn how to tighten up and be a man and be there for him and, and give him that tough love that he deserves and needs and, and be okay with dealing with uncomfortable situations no matter what the circumstances are. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. Exactly. So, like, you know, you having a daughter, did you feel that that was, like, karma's little... Way saying like so you've been a heartbreaker so back in your early days. <laughs> just a reminder. Just a little Man. reminder. Like let, me just, <laughs> let me just say this. I I did I did comment that on a, a certain song I just did recently too. Um, you know any any female or any woman, that, you know that I did hurt in the past. You know like that wasn't my my intentions per se. Just being misguided and um, yeah definitely did teach me a lesson and and how to man up and tighten up and be. Um, a better person and a better man yeah, in general. Up, you know what I mean? mm, so, yeah. Blaze, mm -hmm. yeah. So like you make sure you give your daughter the game. Like, look, man, little boy, say this, say that. But I don't know. She, I don't Early. think she's at the age <laughs> no. that yet. But you're preparing her, bro. I, I don't look. My son is. He's about to be five, bro. I talked to him. He's like, he, like he's 17. <laughs> so, I swear. Look, my, uh, my. This is gonna sound crazy. My uh, daily routine when I have both of my children together, because I have my, you know, I get my daughter, um, you know, half time and everything. Yeah, yeah. So the when they're together, I make them wake up the before they the touch any tablet, phone, decision, TV, okay? anything like that. I make go. sure that they wake uh -huh. up, brush their teeth, uh -huh. both of them, daughter and son, ten push-ups. 
Okay. okay. Yeah. Give him some routine. Okay. Guys, Make him earn up. something. Ten push-ups before anything. Mm. And then after that, they either read two big books, and I say big books like 20 pages, or like four little books. How old's your daughter? Every day. How old's your First daughter? You said your son's five. How My daughter's daughter? eight. She's eight. Okay, so she's older. So what are you? Are you? Are you focused on their form? Like yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> form, form is is definitely important because because I I do it myself. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. It's it's a psychological thing, yeah. like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I see my man, I see you in the gym all the time, okay. you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. <laughs> when I get the opportunity, I try to go, but if not, I, I definitely hit them push-ups. Yeah, and it, and it, it, and it helps. Calisthenics is real. No, it helps. Mm -hmm. Not even anywhere. not even strength-wise, but posture-wise and how yep. you how you conduct yourself and talk said. to people. It helps said. with that. Yeah, exactly. Just right. here. Yeah. Like, just, just make sure the mic still oh, follows bad. you. My bad. My bad. You, 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 you kind of go in and out. I'm going in and out. My bad. <laughs> no, eventually we'll get better mics where you can do that and it'll still pick up on you. Well, I just want to let you know that. Now nah, you good. They turning up in the background too, so it's kind of distracting a little bit. So. No, yeah. Okay, but like, man. So like, I know you've been uh, you've been an, an artist for how long now? Man, I've been doing music um, since I was a freshman in high school. So I've been writing music since I was thirteen. Mm. Nice. Um, so know. what was that uh, first moment? As everybody say, yeah, who was first who? moment with hip hop? Right, or some brown what, sugar shit. You okay. know? What brought you to <laughs> okay. be writing on the pen? So check this out. Number two pencil. <laughs> so my best friend to this day, his name is uh, Chauncey. Go by Quick Shot. One of the dopest lyricists in general. Just topic, subject matter, just everything. So. What happened was we were in we were both in high school, and we ended up, um, you know, like the older the older um, like the seniors and juniors. They're like, yo, like this dude rap, he rap, y'all should battle. So we battled. <laughs> as, as as cliche as that sound, they're like, yeah, y'all need to battle. So we was like in an extended ELP. Y'all had ELP. ELP extended lunch period. It's like in between lunch. It's like thirty minutes. Nah, we didn't have that. We're, we're from southeast. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, <laughs> well, in the, in North County, <laughs> they have. Yeah, some, <laughs> I don't know that North County shit. Yeah, <laughs> they had like an ELP. All I know, oh, lucky bastard. All, hey. all I know that y'all motherfuckers hella good in football. Hey, yep, hey, that, that, yeah. that is true. Back. This, this, uh, Back. In, in most sports, yeah. actually, not just yeah. football. In most sports, like y'all yeah. North County niggas got shit to do, but. Be good at sports, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and get in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> it's either it's the either it's the extreme. It's yeah. either you do be Facts. good at sports or you get in trouble. Yeah, man, that's that's real. So what happened was we were in ELP or whatever. It was like during summer school, and um, we were kind of battling each other. And you know, first time he got me. Next time he wore like a. A Fila jacket, but it didn't say Fila. It said like F dash L A. No. <laughs> uh -oh. I got his ass with that. Yeah, he he. Let me tell you though, he hit me with all the light skin jokes the first time, all the Chico de Barge and all that, all that oh, stuff. Not the Chico de Barge. Yeah, yeah, he torched me the first time. He hit me with all the the light skin jokes. So. Early too, early. So before it was a thing too. So yeah. He said before yeah. it was a thing. For real. The pigment's always a fucking target. Right. Yeah, man. As always. They always head, they head straight to the debarge every time. <laughs> so they go straight to the prince and the debarge every time. <laughs> the Did y'all see that meme where it was like, what light-skinned niggas look like when they yeah. drink in their drink and he had Prince with a straw. <laughs> or like, have you seen that one when like when night when light-skinned niggas fall on the floor and like it's Shamar, Shamar Moore, Moore like, yeah. posing? And <laughs> <laughs> he be doing us dirty, bro. The, the slander is real, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I unfortunately have never really. Like, oh, 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 oh hold on, came on, gotta go up there. Dang, hey, that's what's up, cool. and just that's like his, that, his, his moment of glory. Yeah, I became the third is. member of the podcast. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> For real, Kmart's out here to get his trophy. Okay, hey, that's well, Amelia got that hey, covered. Come on up here, come on up here, get your crown. That's what's up. Oh, he got, so, so he Kmart got, got his hair. That's Kmart got his hair cut by the king of hey. SD. Oh, I'm so excited. Damn, I'm going to see if I can get a haircut now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because last minute, like, he walked up and was just like, or they walked up and was like, uh, we need one more model. Do you mind doing it? And at first, uh, Kmart was kind of like, uh, I don't know, I don't know. And then he ended up, so it was literally last minute. Yeah. And he got the king. That's what's up. Hey, that's how all the best moments, they, that's yeah. how they all line up, though. For that's real. what's up. It's the universe, because he said he was going to make his hair nappy on purpose. 
so on the podcast. Here. He said it yeah, on last, wax. Last week, he said, last week episode, he yeah. said he gonna make his hair scruffy right, and nappy, get it, get it, get it, so he get a haircut on purpose. Yeah, you know the old yeah. lingo, man. You hang out in the barbershop long enough, you are gonna get yeah, your yeah, haircut. Yeah. Facts, yeah. facts, facts. That is true. See, I didn't want to pull up without like an edge, so I had like the little, <laughs> the little Sally's razor, and I had to hit myself a little. Bit. <laughs> I was like, I can't come in here looking. Nah, I I hit my I hit my barber up like yesterday. Nah, you didn't even have a choice. He told you. Yeah, yeah, he told me. He was like, I can't have you come here looking crazy. I'm like, all right. You got me? All right. Word. That's dope. Um, but sorry, so back to what I was saying. Um, so unfortunately with me, like, I, I, I wasn't too big on the local scene with the local music. So I've heard of you. I've, I understand. I've heard of you, for, especially because when I was doing, like, ADH AO7 days, like, I've heard of your name, but I've never really heard your music or seen you. And that's my fault because I never really, like, looked for I guess you can say. But... Earlier, speaking of jokes, earlier we were doing, we were going around talking about lookalikes and stuff, right? <laughs> so you had passed by, and I had text in the group chat. I said, I just seen Matt Barnes, <laughs> and then and then Marco walks up. No, 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 no. I was by myself. So Mark, no, no. But get this, but get this. So Marco walks up to me, and he was like, "You just texted in the in the group chat." I was like, "Yeah," and then he was just like, and he's like, "Who?" He said, "I said, oh yeah, I seen Matt Barnes." He was like, "Who, dummy?" It, he already knew who I was talking about. I was like, I don't know. I don't oh, know no, if it was him. And then when he walked up, I was like, oh, that's him. Hey, <laughs> I get that. I get that at least once or twice a day. That's but my question is, is are you, my question is, are you going? Are you driving thirty hours to whoop a nigga's ass if you have to? It depends on the situation. <laughs> You really have to do a lot to get me really upset. Yo, if you harmed a family member of mine, like a media family, son, daughter, fiance. Oh yeah. Rap. Yo, you gotta think about it. Thirty, the drive, like the, what what he did to confront Jay, uh, uh, Derek Fisher. You have to be beyond pissed. Nah, that's, drive. That ain't that far, bro. Thirty miles ain't that far, bro. That's, no, 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 that's no, Ocean Side to San Diego, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that far. Yeah, you keeping that same energy. You going the whole way too, like yep. <laughs> you going ninety, <laughs> going ninety, yeah, yeah, at least. So you know, look. So if it's yeah, thirty miles, for gas <laughs> at all, at all. <laughs> so look, if you going ninety and it's thirty miles, that's twenty minutes, easy, easy, <laughs> easy. Real. He got there in twenty minutes <laughs> for real. <laughs> uh, that's he probably was mad. Or he probably he was probably hitting the hundred. He probably was hitting hundred ninety five, <laughs> something like that. So now I always think about I always think about when I see Matt when I see Matt Barnes I always think about the song Thirty Hours because what Kanye was saying yeah. towards the end of the song, you know, yeah. like I feel like Matt Burns just whooping niggas' ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drive thirty, yeah, yeah. yeah Whoop him at the school when I show sure got class. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, that's but, real. But that's yeah, real. but no, but like I said, I I've heard your name for over a decade, you know. I but that. I just like I said, I I don't know. I just I suck when it comes to like like when the boys cover like the music stuff. I'm just here listening, you know, yeah. and I'm just soaking it in, you yeah. know. Well, I feel like um, some of the projects I put out, like the last project I put out, was a real intimate project, far as like touching on like situations with my father and um, my upbringing and things like that so I had it on iTunes and Spotify so I, but I put it, I pulled it off because I felt uncomfortable with a lot of stuff and as uh, you know everybody deals with depression their own way I was going through my own thing um, my, my fiance helped me with a lot of different things so um, that project live young die young I'm actually gonna re-release it and just call it live young and um, I actually have like a I don't want to say a conspiracy behind it but like um, my father my brother and my uncle all died at the same age. Oh my goodness! So during that time, that's how old I was when I made that project. Oh shit! So a lot of people thought like, "Oh, live young, die young." Oh, it's, it sounds catchy. No, it's like it's really something that I was living through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I, I pulled it off. When I put the project out again, re put it out. It's mm -hmm. gonna be called Live Young. Um, but I have a new project mm -hmm. that's me right now. Nope. That I'm getting ready to put out at the end of this mm -hmm. month. I definitely want to check that out. Yeah. Oh yeah, both, both of them. <laughs> yeah, this this new project, um, it's more so like that uh, that work life and artist, yeah, and I've family seen, life I've, balance. I've, I've seen I've seen the video. Yes, I've seen the video. Good good video because I think that's uh, very very important in mm -hmm. artists uh, rollouts. Or yes. good visuals, and you know, I will say that that was a good visual that you, you had. Thank mm -hmm. you, I appreciate good it. Good representation, and um, 
I just want to put this in there. Shout outs to Miss Meanie because I think she d- designed your Live Young Die Young. She did. Cover she did. Art. She did. Shout out to Miss Meanie for sure. For sure. We did. Uh, we sat down and tried to figure out a couple of different things. I was like, oh, what do you think about this? No, we can't do that. It kind of looks like this. Let's work on this. Mm-hmm. Let's try this. So it was a it was a different it was a different time in my life. But um, I'm definitely gonna tap back in with her. I, I know we have a bunch of photos. There's a, a photo in particular that I always keep using. I'm probably going to reuse that photo uh-huh. for that project, you know, and, and call it 1.5, Live, Live Young. Take okay. some songs off, put some songs on. Mm-hmm. If y'all got the original, good for you. You'll never see it again. And, <laughs> so and so you're, hitting us, you're hitting us with the, like, the, blue point, the blueprint 1.5? Well, <laughs> in, a sense, like, in a sense, you in know. In a sense, it's just like if you got the Live Young, Die Young, when it dropped, during that time in 2015 and you mm-hmm. have all those songs great uh-huh. half of those people will never hear a third of those songs ever again mm. like me wow. <laughs> i'm all like me so if you <laughs> have it cool <laughs> you know like that lets me know who's been rocking with me for a long time and who really keep it in the archives Fact. right yeah. Fact. Yeah. Gotcha. i kind of pulled that from prince though because he kind of do that he <laughs> yeah. did that a lot <laughs> <laughs> he had nothing online i'm like damn they they they, they had a pride those candy, music and rights right, right off his cold dead hands to get it, get it on apple music man that's a whole different that's a whole different world man, out there I, that's a whole different situation i can i can get into yeah man they had, they they got him for that they, they wanted all that music yeah. he had too much he had too much uh he had 32 studio albums that Damn. he produced and 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 arranged and 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 was in control over. That was all his projects. Mm. So wow, that's, that's crazy. That's so what I'm gonna is, say. Is I don't want to get snatched up. Is, is that is that something that most artists are striving for now? That type of independence where they have own all your masters and and your publishing and all that. Absolutely, that's the the new goal, right? I think like all the like like the big dogs like. They're providing that for people. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Like, um, I just heard Pharrell is like, he's letting people like have their whole catalog without even tripping about it. Mm. Like, so, I, I think that's the new wave. You know what I'm saying? But it, it is, it's definitely a different time now. Before it was mm-hmm. like, you know, you need, you want to be down with the label, we need collateral. You know what I mean? Now yeah. it's not like, I come, like, an artist will come and they'll have their own internet presence. They can go tour by themselves without the help of a label at all. You yeah. know what I mean? So. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. That's dope. So, like, what what do you, what can we expect from this uh, newer project, the the newer rebranded version of the of Mr. Dominic Young? <laughs> um, Dominique. To yeah, be. yeah, Dominique is my real name. That's the government. Uh, the government. <laughs> government. You know what? I wouldn't say necessarily like reinvent it. I would just say evolve. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Nice. Like yeah. just uh, the most honest project I, I put out to date. Period. That's good. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I think we had conversations before the podcast. I was like, Dami, I, I'm gonna need you to open up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Because I know you was like on your young, did, flying, flashy shit. I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> all, right, all right, homie, yeah, that's cool, that. no. But it's time to open up. You gotta get these people to relate to. Yeah, relatable content. Yeah, and I know, and I know, yeah, yeah, like, and I know that you were pitter pattering about it. You, you know, because you weren't. I don't think you were ready. I don't think you were mentally ready. I don't think I was either. I'm gonna you be were mentally with you. ready I don't to, think I was to, to yeah. give that part of yourself just yet. But I had. I mean, maybe some other people have told you. I'm like, but I'm just giving you that foreshadowing. Like, eventually, you want to get to that next level. Right. That's what you're right. gonna have to right. do. Yeah. Of course, of course. Well, you know what I think is gonna take and. Um, for the people that's been around with me for like a long, long time, they know I've, I've really been into like hip hop and spitting and they know who like my favorite artists are and things like that. And one thing I think what happens with artists when they get like a certain amount of attention is they stray away from the love and what brought them there in the first place. Mm-hmm. So now that I have children and it's funny that I have both a you know, girl yeah. and a boy. Mm-hmm. So it's like what I'm saying has to resonate with them like it really does it, ha- it has to sit with them in a certain way i can't be sitting here talking a bunch of crazy stuff on the mic like when when they're singing my songs back like that's what got my attention when i was doing a song and my son was singing it back to me and i was like Damn, he's really paying attention yeah mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. what i mean he's really saying what i'm saying yeah like, and then you know i had a certain record and my daughter was young and i'm like dang i'm really talking about this and my daughter's like this she's this young like, yeah. what's she going to think when she gets older? You yeah. feel me? Mm-hmm. So that that's what kind of made me just, like... Put a lot into perspective. Made me really, like, grow up and glow up as, as, as fast as possible within mm-hmm. the last three to four years. Yeah, that's, that's, that's deep, man. I, I, I like that. I ain't got no kids yet, so... 
And I ain't got no kids, but I work. <laughs> no, but I, I work with kids. I've been working with before. kids for the last <laughs> 11 and a half years. But um, what we learned is from age zero to five, maybe even six, is that's when their mind's a sponge. Right. So that's the like that's why when you were talking about like the little routine you got going, that that's a good that's yeah. good to instill that because just like you trying to do positive stuff, some people they don't realize the negative stuff too. They Sticks. they catch on to exactly. Exactly. Like, one thing I'll say is their behavior, like you think they're not paying attention. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And they'll this, the little mannerisms that you have mm-hmm. when you're upset about things, mm-hmm. you'll see them like mimicking. It's crazy because you're like yeah. looking at yourself. You're yeah. like, yo, don't do that. But yeah, you, you can't, can't really, even, you can't really get mad because you're like, dang, you're doing what I'm doing. They got it from you. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So like another situation is like my son is, um, I won't go too much into it, but my son is like all about superheroes and stuff like that, right? Oh, that's tight. So yeah, it's crazy. So and he loves music. Like he like when I whenever I rap and I like perform somewhere around the house, he's right there with me. Aww. 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 This little yeah. thing is crazy. He's your little crazy. hype man. <laughs> hype man. That, nah, he's gonna be his own. Like <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be his own. I swear. You gonna for ask real. for a feature? So you already got you already got the mic set up, the mic stand, the little the little, crazy thing the is little booth set up for him already. The crazy thing is there's no forcing. It's like it's. He wants to do that. He's yeah. a natural, yeah. It's, it's, man. it's embedded in his personality. But one thing I would say is, like, he would get discouraged when he couldn't do something. Mm. And I would like, man, look, you can't you can't do that, bro. Like, because I talked to him just like I was saying. I talked to him like he's 17. A teen- like he's 17, like he's a teenager. Look, you can't get upset about that. You really got to just, if you, if you mess up, tighten up, get it done. Do it again. Mm-hmm. Do it again until you get better. Do it again until you get better. Yeah. And then, like, he was playing this little Avengers game on my phone. <laughs> he lost, and he's like, you know what? That's cool. He's like, I'm going to come back again. I'm going to hey. get Hulk next time, though. I was like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> But see, but that's you instilling that in him. Like, at that young of an age, their mind's a sponge. They listen right. to everything. Right. Man. Yeah. So... I was just wondering, if, have you been following what's going on at SD Music Scene? Because I know that you've been out in L.A., the I.E. Have you, like, have you, do you notice the stark contrast between, you know, the, the between, well, the I.E. and L.A. compared to San Diego? Like, since you've been, or even North County, because I know North County even have their own little scene. Bruh. <laughs> so like yes, yeah, yeah, paint a picture for us for Bruh, those okay. for the people who the aren't outside. from the outside. So I'm going to ask y'all this. What are y'all doing on September 8th? September eighth. Um, most likely, I might try to go to that podcast expo. Okay, where's I'll that? I'll see. Um, shit, I forgot. I got it's here in San Diego. It's here though. in San Diego. Okay, though. cool. I'm glad it's in San Diego because I will be here in San Diego on the eighth Hip Hop Awareness Festival. Okay, oh, that's okay. Dope. So check this out. So this is a IELA based kind of situation. Mm. They brought mm. this to San Diego, and they started booking artists. And because I live in the IE and I know people from out there, and I was performing with them, I was like, yo. I was like, you bring in a hip hop awareness festival to San Diego. Who do you have from San Diego that's really barring up on here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then, you know, like we, we chopped it up. Um, long story short, that gap that you were talking about, um, and everybody preaches, oh, they go unity, they go push, they go, you know, this and that. Mm-hmm. What right. I, call, really, I call it crabs in the buggy because but, let's, let's be yeah. real. Let's, but look, let's, but look, but look, but check this though. Uh huh. I'm really really trying to build that bridge in san diego because okay. there's there is no matter and i know it's it's hard because a lot of people see san diego and they, they get discouraged because how artists and their attitude mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. and i get that because i was a part of that mm-hmm. um but there are some tight artists out here and there's some really dope artists that i really feel like if we can at least get them in the room for one day mm-hmm. ego aside let let everybody, as many people that are dope, that have their self, at least on iTunes, Spotify, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. really trying to make moves to L.A., do something and show love. We can build like a yes. Atlanta. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. a like a L.A., like, like those kind of unions. Because the only way that San Diego is going to take it to the next level is if we have all these artists tapped in with each other. Yes, right. I agree. There's some, there's some good artists on this bill. That's all I'll say. All right. Oh, what time does it start? Or maybe I'll try to make both. Um, it's from six to twelve. I'll be there myself. Um, who do y'all like in San Diego right now? Oh uh, shit! I mean, 
right now, I mean, like, I listened to Pudizzi's, uh Trap Native Volume 2. That one's hard. That was That's pretty straight. Uh, you know, I fucks with Rossi <laughs> here and there, you word, know. Word, word, word. Uh, you like Rick Scales? Rick, Rick Scales. I actually like uh, the, the o- your Oceanside cat, Ma- Mozzie? The other Mozzie? Not Mozzie from Sacramento. There's another. His Mozzie. Name. He must be a new cat. Well, he. Oh, oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. Oh no! Yeah, there's that other dude, but uh, oh, actually, I, John John Gibbs. John Gibbs. Yep. John Gibbs is dope. Yep. Like I like him a lot. Pull up. He, he's like he's like uh, he reminds me of Kendrick. Pull up. Pull up. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Pull up. All right. Mark and I. If I can't make it, you better make it there. <laughs> oh. Look, 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 look. When y'all airing this? <laughs> what, what what day is that? Oh, uh, we're gonna it's air this on, on. It's on. Oh, Saturday. Oh shit. Well, I'm we're, off. We're airing this on Tuesday. Pull up. All right. So pull up. I think I'm gonna pull. I don't want to yeah. drop the names before they drop the flyer. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you're just saying pull, pull up. Pull. Uh, okay. Okay. So you do a little promo right here. I like that. No, I'm just letting y'all yeah. know because I, I I understand, I understand like how it is in the city and how people can get discouraged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I really, I reached out to like, like now I don't have an ego. I don't care. Like I'll, I'll reach out to anybody that's willing to respond back. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what people need. Regardless of what lyrical content I, I bring. I mean, whatever. I don't think anyone should have an ego. I don't even think that Rob but, Stone should even have an ego. But everybody does. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. But everybody it, and does. He, and he went double platinum. You know No, what but I mean? I'm saying, but <laughs> everybody has their own right to protect their energy and I get that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, all I'm trying to do is throw the alley oop to yeah. everybody. Mm-hmm. I want to just throw the alley oop to everybody, and I want to make sure. Um, you don't want to play hustle. You don't want to hustle and play defense like Matt Barnes. Man, I, I do it all, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and back to the <laughs> basketball <laughs> jokes. <I see>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did he still play for Golden State? <laughs> he still play for Golden you know, State? I'm a three-time champion. Hey, hey, hey. that's what's up. And, and you get on my team, got you a ring hey, too, man. Hey, hey, hey. 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 <laughs> we out here. We out here. All right. Hey, I'll be in the Bay though too in the in the August. All right. Yeah. Man, appreciate you. Appreciate it. They, they, Dime's getting his props right now. Thank you. See? Thank you. Get credit. Get credit where credit's due, man. Appreciate <laughs> that. Appreciate <laughs> that. It was kind of um, and it's weird because I just did a song like so I did three shows back to back, right? So I did a song. I did a show in Compton. Hmm. I did a show in Pomona. Uh huh. And I did a show in San Diego. Uh-huh. Damn. Three <laughs> different responses. Three total different responses. Well, what would you say you got the best response from, or I think Honestly. the most responsive? I guess. I think uh, the most honest. Mm-hmm. I think Compton was probably the most honest. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're like straight to the point. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna over celebrate you. They'll let you know oh, that was dope. Mm-hmm. Okay. Keep, keep doing your thing. That's what's up. Pomona was yeah. cool. I love Pomona. I know a lot of people in Pomona. It was it was super lit. Mm-hmm. San Diego, I got love for everybody in San Diego. I know people are like, who is this dude? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who is that? Yeah. Different vibes. Different man. vibes. It's all love. It's all love. That's that's the thing too, is like every every city has their own culture, so yeah. that's Hip Hop Awareness Festival. It's gonna be crazy. That's dope. Yeah. Hip Hop Awareness Festival. Well, I wish I could go to both of those, but both Mark and I will be on tour. Yeah, they'll be out of town. <laughs> So I gotta I'm, see. I'm pretty much only one. I'll be I'll be going. So you I'll go see. music. You go yeah. pod fest. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> if y'all if y'all want to do like setup and y'all want a table and you want to interview, I'll, I'll get a table for yeah. you. It's nothing. Yeah. Line well, I mean, I mean, actually, I'm just doing the bare minimum right now because our guy Mark. AKA M Easy, he's yeah. back at work right now. Oh yeah. yeah. So I'm just yeah, doing yeah. the bare minimum right now. He yeah. he's the sound guy. He is okay. So yeah. so eventually I'll let might, us know about future events. So yeah, yeah definitely, man. Definitely. Definitely. Work, 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 work. So what I would do, like maybe if I could hit up Shah G. Yeah. That's like yeah. when I could hit the studio and do a podcast there. Yeah. He's right. my he's our he's our engineer when we oh, first dope. started out. No, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Dope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe I hit up the studio like, hey Shad, I got whoop de boop wham coming over. Maybe we get a, like a, an hour interview mm-hmm. and just, you know, knock it out like that, you know, no problem. And I'm with it. I'm with it all, man. All right, just let me yo, you just give me the word, man. Just let me know. Yeah, I'm just, down. Anything I, I can do to help. Yeah, just try to keep it working. You know, I think like like I keep saying over and over because it's embedded in my head like i i noticed like you know the the dopest podcasts or are, are played out in the east coast you know the mm-hmm. joe buttons the, yeah i heard the, y'all having that conversation the, the, the brilliant idiots mm-hmm. and all them and yeah. you know the the horrible decisions they're all usually yeah. the most popular ones are based out of the east coast and, and i'm sitting here like who the fuck is west holding down for here mm-hmm. who's holding it down for the west right and, and and sometimes i just have to say you know what why not me 
Because I feel like I'm pretty sure there are other West Coast podcasts out there doing it. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they are. They're but you know, I'm just gonna say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna step in. I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I can do right. to mm-hmm. contribute to the culture. Right. Mm-hmm. Not be right. a vulture, but to could add to it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. For sure. Yep. That's 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 why I'm trying to throw as many alley oops as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want none, and I don't want anything in return. I just want to just so put people that are pushing the culture forward in in, in positions to do something. Yeah. yeah. And it's up to everybody if they either want to take it yeah, or, or, or not. Facts. You know? Facts. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we trying to know. take it though. So. Yeah, we're trying to take <laughs> it. Like, like that. You know, so I'll like eventually, <laughs> you know, if it takes us to like. Just to even on some random stuff like, hey, we're just going to go to L.A. We got a homie. He got a studio. We're just going to record in L.A. We're going to record in the studio in L.A. Y'all just got to call me. Just let me know. <laughs> don't, don't play. play. <laughs> <laughs> I said don't play. All right. All right. Last, last one. Last shameless plug and I'm done. <laughs> nah, go ahead. If no. y'all not doing nothing on the 18th up in L.A., I'll be back It's some right real then. soulful. I don't know if you guys heard of like soulful noise. Soulful noise. Mm-mm. Yeah, check them out. They got a cool little event. Is they it like grown and sexy shit? Yep. Okay, I bring my lady with me. Real smooth. <laughs> hey, baby. Real smooth. Hey, hey, baby. They got hey real, baby. They got some real nice <laughs> venues that they've been booking to. Um, real, real dedicated people. Dope artists. Like, and when I say dope, it's like your people are like, oh yeah, they were sick. No, like these people are like, yo, that person's next. <laughs> oh, damn. they up next. Oh shit. Yeah, like they had some. Oh, I don't damn. even know her name. They it's had on uh, Tuesday though. Boo. Yeah, it's on. Come on, that's LA for you. LA, uh, like, yeah. like the you most jumping, the, the most time. jumping clubs in LA be happening on a Monday. Facts. Yep. Yeah, like <laughs> it's crazy. What day was it? Thursday. I had a show on <laughs> Thursday in Compton. Mm-hmm. It was like <laughs> I don't know, Thursday in Compton, in the heart of Compton. Just pull up, and I'm like, fantastic. Just Let's pull up. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like sometimes I, I, went, I ask myself, like, dude, like, how could you be bored in LA? I mean, I know traffic sucks and it gets people like not wanting to go out, but like, there's always so much shit to do out there. You know what? You just gotta gauge the times and know when to leave the house. That's yeah, really that, what it's that about. That is true. Because I'm yeah. further from LA. I'm in like the IE. So like, what was part specifically? If you don't mind me asking. Riverside. Riverside. Yep. Oh, you're in Riverside. Oh, okay. Riverside. It's hot as hell out there. It oh, is. Man. I know. Sheesh. My girl just actually um, in February. Well. What is it, Mar- Mar- like near the Marietta area? The yeah. new area. She just built a home. Um, okay. She, so she's a homeowner as of this past February. Oh, dope. So, oh, lit. Yeah. She's like probably 35 minutes away from me then. What is it? Is, um, Me- Menifee? Menifee, yep. yes. That's Menifee. Like 30, yeah. That's like 20 minutes away from me. Man, that so Riverside is like next to San Bernardino. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. See that right there, that makes me just like quiver because I know <laughs> there are some like there's one coworker at my nine to five. Yeah, he drives from I think Menifee to San Diego. Yep. She does too. To work. She works yep. in she works in Coronado still. That drive has to be crazy. Hey, it's crazy, <laughs> but the cost of living is yeah better. But 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 does that all negate while paying for that gas? It depends on what kind of car you got. Well, she does a van pool, yeah. so well, technically and, and they got the pool. Not, yeah. yeah, they got oh, the okay. little van pool too. They got okay. the pool. And then um, he also uh, got the. Well, he he drives a Prius, so okay. I think that saves him. Saves him a little time. Yeah, <laughs> saves him some gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> that saves some gas. But yeah, man, uh, Dami, man, uh, anything else, man? You want to spit a quick little sixteen? Let the whole. <laughs> oh, look yeah. at I him. always wanted to do it, man. Oh, okay. Hey. Oh, little sixteen, no. little eight, whatever. I can give you a little piece of something that's that's off the project. If you yeah, don't. if you don't have to oh, do a right. freestyle. I mean, oh, nah, nah, I mean okay, that's, that's too much. Like, I, you know, that's another thing about these internet motherfuckers. They sit here and they're like, "Oh, I heard that freestyle before." I'm like, "Nigga, you keep coming up off the top every time." Yo, I don't mind. Uh huh. But you know, what I'm saying with the little music in the background, that might kind of throw me off if I come up with a new sixteen. Yeah. But I'll oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Not the music, the music shit. that you I got have some MF no. Doom playing the background. I have, shit, I have okay. the music that I don't own or anything. No copyright infringement. It's fair use. It's music in the background, please. YouTube, don't copy strike. Right. Copyright. Spotify, please. Spotify. Don't. All this shit happened in the background. We're yeah. live. Yeah. Like, I'll We're give live. y'all one. I'll give y'all one. Look. All right, let's hear it. Um, they need a beat or something? No, nah, I'm good. Okay, you go good. Like, <laughs> God, I'm trying to get like him. Brilliance on ultraviolet, I don't be on them. Wait, it's beyond them. Our roots are foundation, not family tree on, so lead on stem. Trailblazing the way you pay them, but don't hurry to focus on the destination to enjoy the journey. My structure ain't Teflon threaded, we all feel unworthy. Smirking through adversity and invertedly. Mm. 
More gems from my son and his sister. If he loses action, dude, he ain't missing the figure. One more time. Sean Bright, that's my son and my apprentice. If he loses action, dude, he ain't missing the figure. So I ground with the whole nine born in September. Chopped the pine timber, embarked through embers. The man in the mirror, the only contender. Lose it all to be your winner and never surrender. Okay. 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 Dami nice. Young, ladies and gentlemen. Man. Man, thank you for coming on the thank podcast. You, man. Man. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Noble appreciate narrative it. coming at the end of the month. Noble yes. narrative, noble narrative, noble narrative. Yump. 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 All right, man. All right, shit, man. We out.